So, Army Boy is currently headed towards the closest blip. Uh, you, in all caps, from a member of the party, who or command squad rather, who will remain nameless, Requisition Astropath from Gazva, two squads lost from Havoc Company, three uh, squads from Havoc Company, about 50%-ish. Uh, they're also pinned down and only moving sluggishly. And Mackie doesn't know he's about to die. Well, he thinks he's about to die. Ollie thinks the ship's blowing apart and that Mackie's fucked. Uh, Mackie thinks that the ship's undergoing minor structural stresses and that his squads are fucked. Nazim has an active mind map of the ship going. The ship might be falling apart. The Medicaid section, uh, situation on the Obsidian Heart is overloaded. Uh, Cusco wanted to remove slash foam over the decorative spikes on the bridge due to last week's accidental impalings. Nazim wants to strategically explode, detach, the big gun from the mothership whilst acquiring explosives along the way. The main goal of the rest of the flotilla is to disable the Xenos fleet and gain knowledge of their home world. And that is it for your reminders. Cool. I think it probably makes sense to start off with our esteemed Grand Captain. Yes. Uh, the uh, Obsidian Heart did get a lot of screen time last week. <laughs> Koya, at last check, you were aboard the bridge of the Obsidian Heart, correct? Uh, yes. Fair, fair. Uh, and then in addition to that, you're surrounded by your sort of throng of... How is it we describe them? Uh, Knife-fighting weasels? In a sack? Yeah. Yeah, the sort of vicious close combat melee going on between the ships, setting the very atmosphere around you on fire in this colossal blazing inferno. In this atmosphere, it is essentially unavoidable for any and all ships to have their void shields flicker and in places or if they're unlucky entirely, dissipate. There's simply too much close-range fire flying around to be able to meaningfully dodge, and the backwash from weapons alone is putting a pretty heavy pressure on uh, most of your shielding, up to and including that of the Obsidian Heart. It is in one such lapse that uh, one of the stations on the bridge goes into high alert. And you are immediately flagged down by the crew, manning it. A speedy check at the cogitators and a check-in with the appropriate ratings indicates that you are being boarded. Sir, you are being boarded. In addition to minor Akareth boarding parties making their way onto the ship through uh, crude boarding torpedoes, at least two of which appear to be your own boarding torpedoes fired back at you. Albeit through somewhat more primitive methods that are only really working due to the close range. There are also several small lances of hostile knights. Your ship's point defense is already starting to target what it can, but you face the very real danger of hostile knights inside your ship. What to do? Mm. Uh, well, Cusco Kuzco can... Cusco is also to hand. So he could be here or not be here as he likes. You're muted for the record, Carl. What do? Well... <laughs> Let's go. Do you feel up to commanding the uh, concentrations and space and various void warfares whilst I lead the defense of the Obsidian Heart? Brother, are you not recalling how the situation occurred when I last commanded a force? Yes, but don't forget, brother, the murder is currently not, in, not part of your command structure. You should be fine. As they once said, shoulda, woulda, coulda. 
were the words of a fool. <laughs> if all ju- else fails, I shall comply. At this junction in the conversation, uh, the alarm changes in colour, and a pale-faced rating turns to explain to you that three hostile knights are loose in the pectoral cargo tree fin. That's uh, lower midships. Do we have any remaining Terminators on board? I think you've got quite a few, actually. Uh, that said, Terminators are not going to do super well in open combat against knights. Yeah, but I can't think of anything else you would have on board that would like. Do right, I'm, imme- I'm immediately going to um, I'm immediately going to open a channel to Magos uh, pro- uh, honored Magos Virith at the uh, at the shrine. Yep, yep. There's a uh, small delay during which the casualty statistics reach three figures. Uh, before someone's able to bring a vox over that's uh, able to pass a priority message through to the shrine. Matos Adjutant Manabi Vereth answers. But Sera! Majos, Majos Vereth. We have been boarded by by those who are suffering the sins of heterodoxy, and indeed open rebellion against the Omnicide's faithful. I must request of you is your Vox Any unit malfunctioning? Sadly not, Honored Magos. There are those amongst the night households of this world who have forsaken their vow to the Omnissiah and have opened, uh, begun hostile action against us. I must, re- I must <sighs> request and inquire as to the status of any and all haywire weaponry that could be laid to bear to bring down these abhorrent heretics and bring them swiftly and literally everyone on to the, justice. Literally everyone on the bridge crew looks around at your usage of the word heretic. Uh, this is why I paused for it. Yeah, there's, there's quite a number of raised eyebrows, but you're the ranking officer on the bridge and no one actually wants to say anything. <laughs> I do believe there was a very audible sigh included in that as well. Like, you didn't want to say it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. As I RP'd, it was how it was. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm not saying I disagree with the RP. You're definitely still getting the look from everyone. No, no, I, I understand. It's, uh, that's Persian talk right there. But I gotta, I gotta couch this in ways that you... means he might actually give me the, <laughs> give me the weapons I want. Heterodox scum. <laughs> I will mobilize what Skitari we have on board. But the shrine is... <coughs> <laughs> <coughs> ah, weak flesh. I will mobilize what Skitari we have on board, but the shrine is lacking in armaments compared to our mass conveyor. On Magos, again, I wish only to deploy haywire weaponry to disable the uh, the knights until the occupants can be brought to justice at a later point. We do not wish to damage the suits. <coughs> we wish to stop them from enacting their treasonous ways. How many knights are we looking at? Only three so far. <laughs> a rating nearby coughs awkwardly, points to a new red blip on the screen. Four, my lord. Four, in fact. I don't know. Let me just double-check and see if there's much uh, what the haywire uh, haywire missile a bit. Uh, roleplay with yourselves for just two seconds. In any case, I would like to quickly turn to Kuzco. Honored Apothecary Kuzco, I need you to remain here, provide firing solutions for the rest of the fleet. You are an excellent marksman, if I do not uh, mistakenly remember. This one is indeed competent. Shall comply. Excellent. If Magos Virith can lead a assault to disable these knights with haywire weaponry so that we may gain control of the suits, especially, and the foul traitors that occupy them, I will lead the defence against the Akaret boarding menace. We must merely stay in the fight. The longer they, the longer they remain, the longer they, the longer they will take heavy losses from which they cannot recover. Already, look upon their, look upon their main vessel. You can see now even that its structure weakens. Its void shields become lesser. (laughs) 
Concentrate your fire upon him, <coughs> and we shall have victory. Confirm, brother captain. So, uh, Vanabi has good... Well, no, Vanabi has bad news for you, unfortunately. It does not look like there's much in the way of uh, haywire stuff at this pay grade. Like, they're likely to have some haywire grenades, but for punching through night shielding, they don't have a huge amount. To be fair, I was mostly going haywire grenades and beating him on that one to say, hey, we need to uh, take re-control of the... Uh take control of the night suits away from the filthy heterodox uh, heretics who are currently occupying them. But I think I might have got him riled up anyway, so... <clears throat> yeah, cool, okay. As long as you're not uh, not too fussed about the, the haywire, because sadly I don't think he's going to no, have it's much mostly, stock. No, it's mostly one of those ones of couch in terms of, well, I really uh, want to uh, make sure I see. That the, the holy technology is protected. Right, which, fair. So you weren't really expecting haywire grenades, you were just hoping to not piss him off so that it's his idea when he blows the ti- uh, blows the knights up. Okay. Got it in one. Smart political <laughs> he'll energy. Be, he'll be annoyed at me if I order them their unilateral destruction, but if he's sanctioning it on holy grounds, then... Oh, well, that's... Well. that's Sadly, He's an entirely fair and reliable trick. I'm not going to ask for any roll on that one. <laughs> <clears throat> we are lacking in stocks of haywire materials and munitions. These heterodox scum will be brought to heel with fire and flame. <coughs> <coughs> of course I'd make us. It wasn't, it wasn't just... He lacks the required throat, hence the coughing. <laughs> I love the look of slight confusion spreading over your face for a second there, Holly. What? No, I didn't know he had... Well, actually, I didn't know he had no throat, but I see where you're coming from. You see, the flesh is weak. <laughs> <laughs> I will have my skitari deployed at once. Do I have your permission to take extreme measures? Honored Magos is the ranking member of the <coughs> here. You, of course, have full operational discre- uh, discretion to pursue all methods of dealing with, as you say, heterodox traitors. <sighs> I have a plan. I, as, I, as a mere material servant of the Omnissiah, would not dare to interfere with such holy work. Withdraw. It would be helpful if I shared the map speedily of the Obsidian Heart as it currently stands. This is likely to change uh, by the time we get around to it. But... <clears throat> I have a plan. Withdraw your skilled personnel from the pectoral cargo tree fin. And only your skilled personnel and I will take care of the borders. Um, uh, am I able to overhear this? Yeah, this is on a moder- well, it's not an open, open channel, but you're like gathered around the Vox unit. Okay, right. <coughs> I just pinch the bridge of my helmet's nose. <laughs> yeah, fortunately for you, Vox does not carry video, and so your picked feed remains unobserved. That could have been a blunder. Cool. Uh, I think he's waiting on your ascent there, Benji. Or indeed, either of, of your ascents. Really. Of course, on an Agos. I shall, I, shall de- uh, I shall leave the bridge in the capable hands of our chief apothecary, uh, who will relay any uh, relevant information to you should you require it. I, myself, will be leading a contingent to push back the Akhareth, who are attempting to board this vessel. Excellent. And uh, with that... The Vox Channel cuts out. Your ratings report a flurry of activity being directed out from the Mechanicum Forge Shrine. I would like to give the uh, rec- I would like to give the uh, orders for skilled personnel to retreat from the aforementioned pectoral cargo tree fin. Excellent. Your uh, gonna... sorry. I will say. However, I will say. I will. How many um, specialist armsmen do we have in that area? 
probably quite a few. There'll be okay. like emergency response protocols. They they're not waiting for permission to go deal with the. the emer- like- okay, the emergency response protocols will be that any in that area will need to pull back. However, establish a establish a cordon around the auxiliary plasma drive. Do not allow them to re- to reach that area. <laughs> so if fun- anyone, Ooh, sorry. Now I was just going to ask if anyone else has the feeling that he's going to try and vent them. No, I'm I'm just making sure they don't get to our auxiliary plasma drives. So Oh yeah, no, I meant Manavi's plan is to try and space them. I mean, entirely possibly that he's gonna try and space them, but I that's not really my pro- I just don't want them destroying our auxiliary plasma drive be by being colossal. Oh yeah, no, that that wasn't a question. It, it was more just one of those like uh oh moments. So as you uh as you move to have the auxiliary plasma drives defended. This clashes with several minor orders coming out from the Forge Shrine, and Manabi's plan almost immediately becomes clear to you. It looks... Oh god, he's gonna vent the plasma drives into the fucking... Yeah, it looks like he's going to vent the drives into the cargo fin. To be oh fair, god, that's even worse! Sorry. To be fair, he does <laughs> to do that, he will be able to... uh he will be able to move the people back away from the plasma drives, and he will need them defended in order to vent them. Yes, that's why he wants you to get the... Presumably why he wants you to get the... Um, uh, wants you to get vital personnel out of there, while still holding, like, leaving everyone else to die. Uh, you're also aware, or at least one of your uh, technomats makes you aware, <coughs> that we can't safely just vent the drives like that. We need to overload them somewhat first. The technomat leaves the inherent proposition dangling. We're about to daisy juke what? this motherfucker. How, ba- um, how badly would venting the drives slow our, slow our weapon batteries and void shield and engine? Uh, would we be able to? Would we be able to assist on? Would we be able to assist on generally uh, power? Void shield away. Uh, void shield arrays are located quite far away. Um, you should be fine, but your drives are being pretty heavily taxed at the moment. Uh, lance battery wise, as long as it doesn't hit the reservoirs for lance battery primers, <laughs> uh, essentially it's as long as it doesn't hit anything vital, and as long as the little overload stays a little overload. <coughs> Yeah, the rating whether or not it stays a little overload is the problem. The rating coughs awkwardly and points at a fifth <laughs> and sixth tiny night dot on the screen. That's almost the last of them, my lord. Um, can I take <laughs> note of um, the technomat that uh, raised the point of the overload? Sure. Go. Cool. I would note that on your sheet somewhere. The reason. <laughs> Okay, well... Oh, I, I wanted to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, highlight him to, um... Oh, what's his character's name? I like that the Medicaid area is hosted in a blister. Uh, yeah, it's just what you call things. I, I, know, I know what a blister is yeah. in, in the structural context, but I just find that entertaining. You see. Just laugh at my designs, why don't you, Ollie? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I carefully trace designs. So... Let's leave y'all to ponder exactly what you want doing there. And switch on over to the boarding team. Ollie Wolly Dig Dog. Uni Wooly Pooly. Nice comeback, I guess. No, How wasn't. is Mackie doing right now? Well, he's hearing the screams of his comrades and brothers in arms dying in the comms around him. He's seeing rust slowly spreading and eating its way up and around. I know that the comms are partially down, but the, there are snatches coming through. That's true. Uh, there is a rust <laughs> spreading from just everywhere. Yeah, the pattern uh, in front of you almost looks like a face. And uh, my, my delicate ear is telling me that we are currently falling and pitching upwards. As you are as not currently falling, but if you were, your ear would tell you that. Oh, okay, I thought we were already falling. Okay. Um, you know that the ship is wobbling somewhat, uh, but it was also wobbling quite a bit beforehand. It is getting close-range bombarded. But I guess you didn't know that, 
So from your point of view, the ship has, it sounds like, it feels like it might be shaking itself apart, as it, it, it would have to be some immense battery of forces at extremely close range to, to feel this wobbly. Uh, I'm going to see if the void shields are down on the ship, and if I can then contact the Obsidian Heart. Uh, the void shields are flickering in places. Regardless, you're not getting anything from the Obsidian Heart whatsoever, no matter how hard you try. The machine spirit in your helmet groans in protest. Uh, I'm going to then send out a general wideband on the ship, not giving a shit who hears, uh, asking, um... You know, is anyone else see? Is anyone else seeing this this rust spread? Does anyone um, have an explanation for me? Logic over intelligence, please. I think we said it was plus ten last time. Okay. Yeah, I made that. Okay. Uh, over intelligence. Yeah, I think it's forty-five or under. Fair, fair. So that looks like three dos to me. Yes, indeed. So. We're going to say right away that the other Havoc squads, those who survive, are probably a bit busy. And most of the murder are going to care. But two groups of people would hear it. One of whom has their own helmet, and thus will pick up the vo- uh, the uh, wide spectrum uh, box, ba- uh, box blast anyway. So that'll be your Nazim. And the other of whom is carrying his companies, or his companies, his... Uh, Attached command squad's Vox unit, which is captain of the Soviet Salutators, Yef Son. <laughs> it's a mononym. See, see. So, uh, yeah, from those two characters, then, uh, you're Nicholas, if you're talking, you're muted. Talking, just deliberating. <laughs> so what, so why have you come to us? That there's weird rust spreading everywhere. I, I, I've, I've, I said, has anyone ever seen this weird rust? And I also kind of just want a status update. Uh, there's weird rust everywhere. I'll go, yes, possible structural integrity issues. <laughs> Helpful. Logic over intelligence and a plus 10, please, for Nicholas, to send it back. If that's the message you would like to send. Um. Uh. Yes, I am. It doesn't look good. That's what I'm sending back. Okay. Logic over intelligence. <laughs> Yay! That's a pass. Jesus Christ. In, yeah, in you... Not... My oh, 55 plus 10. That's 65 or under. That's four degrees of success. Yeah, his his voice is weirdly clear. Like, you, you're hearing almost nothing but static over the voice, but the zeeb cuts straight through. Uh, was there anything from yes on? Uh... I try to report and be like, attempted evacuation with the squad, ran out of pilots, currently looking for additional pilots, had not yet noticed the rust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find my stats again, because I didn't even know. Uh, I forget where I said they were, but I know you were the 33rd Company, 59th Regiment. So yeah, for whatever reason, there seem to be some Solian Salutators on board. Uh, as far as <laughs> as far as you're aware, uh, Mackie, they weren't supposed to be. They were supposed to get ordered down to one of the islands, you know, where the, the fighting would be a little bit less fierce and they could actually survive for a bit. Meanwhile, outside, far away from where you can see another island vaporizes, taking with it the entire regiment of people brought over from Halicon. Those poor, poor schmucks. What they're there for? To be vaporized. To be vaporized in meaningless war after their orders are completely overridden by changing circumstances. Sounds like 40k. Well, I guess in this case 30k. Um, it sounds in like dark war in general. In the 31st millennium, there is only Haig's general order number two. Christ. Uh, cool, so... Do I hear that? Does, does um? Does oh yeah, punch- actually, sorry. I'll I'll take the uh, the test review as well, please, Creed. Yeah, I just found my stats. What was it? It's uh, logic over intelligence, but you could consider yourself trained in logic if you're not. All right. Uh, fail. Fail. Yeah. No, you're you're doing your best, but uh, it's it's just not going through, like, you're getting nothing but static, and from the point of view of Koya, uh, Koya? from the point of view of Maki, you get, like, garbled bursts that sound like human speech, but for all you know, they could be Zeos propaganda. So, Nick 
Well, Nazim's telling me that there's structural integrity issues, or there's just, yes, he's seeing rust. I think he said, oh, sorry, yeah, what was your exact phrasing, Nicholas? Uh, yes, I see the rust. It's not looking good. Um, uh, okay, that doesn't give me anywhere near enough uh, non-metagamey knowledge to not continue pressing towards the bridge. One of your Can crew. You possible structural thing when... What of your no? He did not. What of your my crew? Initial, and then I changed it. What of your crew? What of your squad mates? I'm not sure why. One of your squad mates turns to you, Mackie. Mm-hmm. Brother Captain, should we not push on? It's clear that the others aren't coming. Uh, how many friend or foe tags am I still seeing for my my company? Uh, uh I yeah, we had this in the reminders, right? Uh, yeah. there's. Three squads that are still moving, but they're moving extremely sluggishly. Uh, and the last contact you have with them, they reported heavy casualties. Now the contact's basically completely forgone. They're uh, they're doing a lot worse than that. I might also try voxing. Um, I believe uh, warp capabilities have been disabled. You can't warp in the atmosphere of a planet anyway. Oh, okay. can't, really, can't really warp inside a gravity well, to be fair. Yeah, it's the general. I'm sure someone crazy enough could try. Pe- people, no, it just, if it you just really fails. wanted to try it, it, you could try it, it just wouldn't go well. Yeah. Well, That's what I mean. Like, no, but the, the, so the caveat is that it's supposed to fail mostly so that you can't go, I'm a minor level terrorist, I'm going to enter the warp and kill everyone immediately without any need for long term planning because I just open a warp rift with my ship. Uh, so it just doesn't work close to planets. That sounds oddly thoughtful of GW. I mean, it's mostly to patch up the giant gaping plot hole. That's like, yeah. But so to be fair, yeah, like almost all star uh, sci-fi things have something along these lines. And if you don't, then it radically changes the setting, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Can be fun. It's what happened in the second Star Wars movie in the new trilogy, the newest trilogy. Oh yeah, where they don't even go there. Where they then had to go back afterwards and say like, "Oh, this is one in a million, which makes the entire thing even stupider. So now it does make sense, but it was a dumb, dumb thing to do, and actually kind of selfish because the best thing she could have done in that moment would have been to stand there and take the shots as she was doing, rather than walk through them, potentially survive. But then, let's just not even yeah, go. Let's just yeah. not even go there. Yeah, oh. yes, yeah, it makes me too angry. <laughs> So um, too what are we doing? I don't actually care about Star Wars that much. What are we doing, Mackie? Uh, uh, this is non meta gaming, and I might. Uh, this is a suggestion. <laughs> if you could seize the bridge, you would probably know that if you were able to put the ship into a fast <laughs> climb, as in try and climb out of the planet's gravity well, then you would you would probably be able to disable, uh, then plant explosives to disable the bridge and try and escape in a fighter that way. Basically, you'd leave the ship hooked in system, unable to really help in any way. Yeah. Whilst we finish off well, the rest of them. That's kind I, of what I'm thinking as well. I yeah. think you might have some troubles with that, but you're welcome to try. Well, I, 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 I don't see bridge. many options for him at the moment. <laughs> very true. Yeah. We're taking the bridge, because uh, as far as I'm aware... We're all good. Nick wanted to roll to tell me that there's no void capability, but I suppose that's not necessarily needed, seeing as we went on that yeah. five minute uh, tribe. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to push forward for the bridge. For the bridge! Okay. Abandoning the antechamber you've held down for the last five, ten minutes feels so long. As your ammunition starts to run lower and lower, your battle brothers in arms helping you hold off the Akareth attacks from the outside. You bring someone with a chainsword up and have them, a chainsword, chain fist, and have them carve their way onto the Akareth Bridge, revealing an all too human looking structure. The interior is uh, vast, studded with cogitator stations. Akareth swarm to and fro. Dozens are already gathered in impromptu but effectively arranged barricades around the interior of your antechamber. So, first thing... Oh, no, actually, I probably shouldn't start throwing crack grenades in there. And that is more or less what they do to you the second you cut through, as they've had ample time to prepare. Grenades start filling the air, lobbed towards your little antechamber. Now that the door is somewhat open, 
You've got moments to move before the space you're in fills up with nothing but overwhelming amounts of explosion. <laughs> then we push through like motherfuckers. Okie dokie, right. I feel like this is Roland territory, Ollie. In fact, this is probably is, like... Yeah, he is in Califracti, so he probably would be alright, but... <laughs> well, yes, but also no. It's like, the buff is the quest, is it, the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, you, it can definitely take one crack grenade, can maybe even take ten crack grenades at the same time. Can it take a hundred? There's a lot of crack. That's more crack than you see at Builders. So. I mean, you've been paused outside for quite a while, so they've had ample time to prepare their defensive positions whilst continuing to do their best to man the one room they can't really pull out of. Uh, cool, so macky. Mm. This is probably going to be a few rapid fire rolls to see if you can take the bridge without losing anyone. If I recall correctly, you've got six Battle Brothers in Terminator Army in addition to yourself. I do believe that's the correct case. Yes. What would you like to roll for storming in? Uh, or, or, like, also, what tactic are you going to take? We can work the roll backwards from there, either way. Okay, so I'm thinking, uh, do we have the ability to shape our personal shields? Do our, do our crux mechanicus, or whatever they're called? Uh, uh, no, it, it's, no a it, it's a bubble shield. There, there is specific something we need to do that. You don't have access to it. Okay, so what I'm thinking we do is something along the lines of a spearhead, <coughs> where, uh, mm, actually, no, no. Push through the, uh, the door. How wide are the doors? Are they big enough for like three abreast, two abreast? You're lucky to get one through at the moment, unfortunately. Okay, one goes through, then we come out in an arrowhead and spread out in a bubble like that. So, you know. Um, and I think have the flankers on the sides start shooting outwards towards whoever's further away and then have whoever's closer just charged the barricade with their chain fists and such. And it was your Volkites everyone's got at the moment, right? Everyone's got Volkites. Well, I mean, if you're ever going to be equipped for a boarding action against hundreds of heavily prepared entrenched enemies... Who aren't wearing power armor. Uh, well, I don't think they're wearing power armor, to be fair, but... That's what I mean. It's, they're not wearing power armor, so therefore Volkites... Ideal. Well, yeah, exactly. This is what I was going to say, is, is fucking seven Terminators with Volkite heavy weaponry in a marine-centric game. Mm. Your odds um, aren't bad, but they're not good. I will take... I feel like this is probably going to be... Do you have command? Yeah, you do. It's a basic. I will take I command don't... over ballistic skill, please. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy that I <laughs> raised that to 60. <laughs> yes, I... I, I, I uh... That's Five degrees of success, isn't it? Five degrees of success there, mate. Probably should have given you a negative mod, really. Too late. We're already wrong. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Well, the initial, the initial fucking file in goes pretty well. You were fairly prepared for this, uh, not necessarily specifically getting drowned in crack grenades immediately, but you knew that something was going to happen. They've had too long to prepare, and they're generally too competent a group of fighters for you to not suffer somewhat for giving them so much free time. And so more or less the second you've put uh, cut through enough to be able to push through into the next room, the squad piles in, a tide of Akareth only just stopping uh, behind you before they run into their own crack grenades as a rain of the grenades piles down on you, aiming first for the room and then for your charging swarm of Terminators. What a sentence, charging swarm of Terminators. You love to hear it. <laughs> Volkites flashing, you begin atomizing Akareth, moving in an arrowhead formation straight towards their barricade. No fuss, no muss. Fairly direct, fairly blunt, fairly devastating. Two, three dozen barricades fall in the first opening 20, 30 seconds. Volkite weaponry flashing. Muzzle flares light up all across the bridge as auto guns begin to chitter and chatter, the Akareth taking full advantage of their uh, overwhelming numbers. From pre-prepared positions both on the ground uh, and further up, in small nests and pods, they fire at you. Sniper shells, auto gun shells, even crude bolt. The rain of grenades is just about delayed and is starting to thin already, but it is beginning to follow you 
back towards the barricades as they fall in front of you. You have successfully pushed out of your tiny death pocket with zero casualties and are in a fairly advantageous position, having smashed the first line of barricades. Now, in front of you, you've got maybe another smaller, sparser line of barricades. This one spaced out a little bit. And then behind that, you have like a heavy line of fortifications on which Akareth are setting up heavier weapons, auto cannons. You can see a couple of las cannons up there, which will do a number on even your Terminator armor if they get a shot in, uh, or a couple of shots in. <clears throat> Already starting to try and bring to bear, uh, bring themselves to bear on you, but having thoroughly missed the opening volley due to the lightning speed with which you pushed out, I'm going to say you need two more rolls to successfully break resistance on the bridge. What do you do oh. for the trek between you and that final heavy barricade? Uh, so we are going to soften up the heavy barricade with all of our grenades. If there are seven of us, including myself, and we all have three cracks and three... I don't think you can use grenades, can you? Don't you have chain fists and volkites going on? Oh, I mean, can you not just, like... Are they not a grippable item that you can just... Yeah. I suppose they're probably underslung, hey, but it's... You would be, presumably you'd have some that you could use. Yeah, my issue yeah. is more what's where's the hand for it. I think I think they'd still the chain they, fist, presumably the chain fist. Is, yeah, it is works as a hand, hand, but a fucking chain fist is not optimum for if nothing else for pulling the pin out of a grenade. I presume they're not pin based. Oh, I suppose that's true. You can get a trigger based one. Yeah, that's fair. Even then, like I mean, surely the digits of Terminator hand armor, gauntlet, whatever is going to be pretty chunky compared to the button. You know what? I think this is. So that's entirely fair, and that's also where I was coming from. But this also seems like stuff that you would think about before you put grenades on a Terminator. So what we're mm. going to do is assume that if you're going to put grenades on a Terminator, you would already have those grenades set up to be used by someone in Terminator armor. It makes sense. Which presumably, like, maybe they're like special maglocks, and the machine spirit governs when they're loosed and such, and you just have to get used to the art of like open handed flinging them at things. Mm. So we'll whack a minus 10 on for it because it's probably still quite awkward, but we'll call it possible. Okay. Especially because you're not precision grenading anything. You're not, like, no. trick-shotting these grenades so they bounce three times. You're rapid-fire mass lobbing grenades at targets. That yeah. said, crack grenades are small impact. Actually, think about it, he's, a, he's a captain, are. right? Uh, yeah, he's a captain. In which so, case, he has access to a special piece of war gear called a grenade harness. It's an auto-dispenser. Huh. It nice. dispenses them on like a rope, and you just lob the rope. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Ollie's wearing a grenade harness. I'm not wearing thing. a grenade harness. Oh, no, fair. Um, this isn't Blades in the Dark. Fun as that would be, you can't retroactively get... Pi well, I suppose you can if you ask, and it makes sense. But I, I think he was heavily armed enough, and was expecting yeah. to have a lot more Terminators than this when he pushed on the bridge. Um, so the crack grenades are going towards the heaviest weapons? So the last oh, cannon... Oh, no, I follow you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and then the frag grenades are going towards just large groups of Akareth that I can soften up with, well, well by mulching them, I suppose. Okay, uh, I will take. Let's fall back on our old friend, Principia Bellicosa, please, over ballistic skill, and we'll give you the minus 10. Okay, so 50 or under. Yeah. That's a lot of successes. Ooh. Doss? Uh, if it was 50 or under, that's 12. Uh, sorry, three successes. It's not bad. Yeah, your spear tip is starting to... Fault is the wrong word, but flatten. Those at the front, yourself included, are taking uh, more time to move less distance as you're throwing your grenades out, bringing you to almost a straight line. Rather than dealing with the uh, low-level barricades and the Akareth waiting in them, you simply ignore them, deciding to push on towards the major target. Grenades hucked out, you take down not all, but several, or indeed most. Let's see, you've got seven Terminators. Yeah, you've got a lot of crack grenades, and you are hucking them. Um, yeah. Sometimes the landing does more damage than the explosion, I can imagine. In addition to sowing <laughs> an you amount... throwing frags rather than cracks? No, he was throwing cracks at the heavy weapons and then frags at concentrations. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I said that as well initially, and then Ollie explained his plan. and was like, oh, that actually makes a fair amount of sense. Uh, sorry, don't be doing Ollie for a while here. We'll switch on. Uh, we'll scooch on in a second. Um, <clears throat> you can 
quiet. Yeah, I, I was trying to figure out what... To, I was expecting you to lose at some point here. For the record, I was going to charge him a Terminator per degree of failure, and he's just not failed at all so far. So if he seems like he's being OP, he's being jammy. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yes, ignoring the lesser squads of Akareth, you simply push on for the last major barricade, made up of uh, what looked to be salvaged cogitated banks, wreckage drew, uh, drawn in, <coughs> the corpses of other Akareth, really anything and everything that the Xenos scourge had to hand. Uh, we are going to bring our Volkite weaponry to bear and scour that from the face of the bridge. That last barricade is being okay. mulked. You can see, now that you're close, uh, closer to it, that it's been crudely uh, sort of pasted together with, uh, at, at a guesstimate, you'd assume some kind of rubber cement, but you have no idea exactly what or how. What is your strategy here, Ollie? You've got seven Terminators versus several hundreds of marrow-drinking, salvage-using Akarath. Uh, so in volleys, so that we don't... Uh... I don't know if we have like essentially backpack ammo supplies or anything, but uh, I guess in volleys raking our weaponry across the the, the the crude masses in front of us, keeping a constant line of uh, seething energy weaponry uh, just flashing across them. Okay, I will give you each flash. By the way, we step forward. So so each volley we take one step forward. New volley comes out. You step forward. Basically, just constantly pushing a constant in. push march thing on the bridge. Okay, cool. I will give you. I'll take forbidden law weaponry over ballistic skill cool. at a minus twenty, please. Why a minus twenty? Because you are trying to kill hundreds of Akareth in incredibly uh, kill hundreds and hundreds of Akareth with only seven people in incredibly quick succession, as they pound you with volley fire. You've still got the surviving heavy weapons, the snipers, the like hundreds of auto gun shots ricocheting your way, the backwash of grenades, and now that that's started to get away from the entrance that you push through, there are Akareth pushing up from the rear who are firing at you, plus the Akareth who you just strolled past previously. Okay, that's fine. So that means this is a 40 or under. Oops. I'm going to re-roll that with my hundo, single hundo, remaining. Hundo, 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 hundo. Three degrees of failure. Three of your Terminators crumple in not at all quick succession. <sighs> their shields overwhelmed, their armor gradually but horrifyingly stripped away. The remaining four, plus yourself, punch straight through the barricade, having annihilated the Akareth in front of you, as well as uh, with no small contribution by your deceased comrades. Friend or foe tells you already that the three marines died uh, quick, if not altogether peaceful, death. You are not exactly isolated on the bridge, but you've got fairly little ammunition left at this point, and there are Akareth reinforcements pouring through the hole that you made, as well as other doors onto the bridge. What? You know what? I'm not going to ask you what do. Think about what do. Yeah, we'll spend it on to someone else. Sure. Meanwhile, Captain Yefson, what are we up to? Uh, guess we just keep heading towards that random friendly marker I saw. Yeah. You and your, was it seven people you had with you? Yeah, seven people, I believe. <coughs> Including Miggins yeah, the Grenade Yeah, left guy. with seven. Yeah. So it's you, Miggins the Grenade Guy, and like six other people. You push through corridor after corridor, each of them strangely deserted after the uh, initial horrifying push through the Akareth and horrifying march back to the uh, hangar bay. These corridors seem altogether isolated, though they are strangely patchworked, spiderwebbed with rust, until you eventually come to a large open room in which you can see two, three dozen Akareth currently in the process of stripping five, six, seven Astartes Terminators. Three more lie in the corner, their bodies stacked neatly, their armour carefully torn off and sorted into like parts, looking strangely ghostly and mighty even in defeat 
like some colossal dead behemoth. What do? Actually, this should probably be a fear check, right? That would scare the shit out of me. I will take... I mean, I've been hanging out with Astartes for a while now, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, but for very, your squad... Very murder-happy very Astartes as yeah, well. Yeah, for your squad at the very least, though. Sure. So let's take... We'll call it willpower. We'll give the Soviet Soviets uh, plus 20, though. So, yeah, fear test, please. I don't know if you've got resist fear, but if you do, it could count. Uh, that'd be a pass. Plus 20. <laughs> Jesus, what's your willpower? 45. Oh, fair. Squeaked it. Don't sell your tears. Don't take no pussies. <clears throat> they don't live long enough. So our friendly marker, is that the one currently being picked at? Yeah, one of the seven currently being picked at. The uh, Miggins next to you swallows quietly, gently starts taking the lid off of his grenade box. Mm. Good idea, Miggins. <laughs> Uh, all the men to just start lobbing grenades in. We'll follow it up with a bayonet charge. <laughs> with with a, a speedy <laughs> series of hand gestures. Yeah, give me a ballistic skill check. We'll just see how fast you can do it. Reed commanding the Imperial Guard. Oh, Fix bayonets, lad. <laughs> oh, slightly better. <laughs> What's your doff there? Uh, ballistic skill... If I there, four. That's four degrees of failure. You start hucking grenades in, but almost as soon as the first one explodes, the Akareth scatter, taking up positions, and also gun shells begin spraying back out. Two of your men go down in the crossfire immediately. Miggins hauls the grenade crate into cover, and the rest of you throw yourselves behind whatever doors or bits of wreckage you can find. What do? The Asartes they were picking at, does he seem in any ways able? No, no, all of the Astartes in there seem to be dead. Or, I guess, convincingly paralysed. What am I even fighting for? I need a goddamn pilot. <laughs> I thought one of them was alright. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you did go towards the still friend or foe marker. <laughs> I thought it would only show up if they are alive. Uh, maybe at an Astartes grade, but uh, unfortunately for yourself, you're you're just sort of getting. Is this a what's it called? Is this on my side or not? Well, if there's no benefit to us being here, we'll just retreat and go to another pl- blip. Uh, Miggins pipes up quickly, sir. Do I have to lug the grenades? I'm not sure I can keep up. Hmm. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a so speedy toughness. Commissars role. aren't a thing yet, right? <laughs> we got a candidate. <laughs> they are not. They are. Oh, they only become a thing for the guard. The army never has them. Marines have them. Weirdly, in this era, but uh, not the army. Okay, let's see how Miggins does. What's your toughness, Creed? Uh, forty. Fucking hell. <laughs> Miggins. Three dos for Miggins as he sighs. <laughs> Pulls the crate up, and the <laughs> remaining six of you to uh, cumulatively scarper. This is why commissars work. Where are you heading to? It's the next nearest friendly blip. This time we'll go for one that looks like it's moving a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think you only had two on the thing. Uh, <laughs> I will take an agility test to see if you can outrun the Akarath, please. I'm going to whack a minus ten on there. Sure. Don't get one. Ooh, uh, one success. Fucking hell. <laughs> Legging it with all the speed you and your five surprisingly non-terrified companions can manage, one of whom is hucking a full crate of grenades. <laughs> I'd need that. <laughs> you, uh, you move towards the closest friendly blip. <laughs> It is registered as a marine. Oh, it is uh, flagging itself as a marine friend or foe marker. But as you approach to within maybe a hundred meters, you can already hear the uh, fizzes, hisses, and pops like air being flash fried, of volkites going off in quick succession, as well as the heavy staccatos of repeated furious autogun fire and occasional grenades. 
you don't have to approach the Akareth positions to realize that the marines you're moving towards are heavily under fire, probably pinned down. Hmm. In which case, we'll try and uh, sneak a bit closer to the battlefield, get a good eye on the positions, and try and flank the enemy for our boys. <laughs> yeah, all right. You know what? I will take Tactica Imperialis, Principia Bellicosa, uh, over Perception, please. This is going to be some tunnel fighting bullshit. Uh, you. Hundo, 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 hundo. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> What's uh, your was there a modifier, sorry. No, there wasn't. Uh, two successes. Two successes. You get less modifiers than everyone else because you're only playing a reinforcement character, so I'm a little bit nicer than I would be otherwise. Um, <sighs> fucking hell, yeah. Sorry, two successes, did you say? Yeah. And that was your last fate as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> the marines are pinned down in an antechamber uh, in an antechamber in an amphitheatre what purpose it could possibly have served you can't imagine but the small groove set into a recessed uh, upsloping curve pretty clearly look like they might be seats for the Akareth you don't know the mind of the Xenos what you do know is that this provides a pretty clear uh, line of defense that the Space Marines have fortified, and thus a pretty clear line that the Akareth are currently attacking from. It doesn't take too long for you to traverse the sort of the rear of that, uh, finding the assorted Akareth teams working on uh, getting through to the Marines from the other side without completely tearing the wall down, uh, and quietly dispatch them. It wouldn't be quiet if there wasn't a battle going on next door, but as there is, your volleys of auto-fire are, if not missed, not thoroughly investigated. From there, you are then able to come into the rear of the main Akareth assault force, and grenades in hand begin this time actually lobbing them into the waves of uh, Akareth assaulters. This causes just enough disruption to allow the marine terminators to break through the lines in a flurry of volkite weaponry and flying chain fists, one of which accidentally pastes another of your men. But then... <laughs> you successfully relieve the beleaguered Havoc Squad, a towering terminator during the small breather that they've earned, marches up to you. Snap a salute. State your name and rank, soldier. I am Budley Jefferson, captain of the 59th Soylent Solitaires. My last act, my, my last orders were to evacuate. However, we ran out of pilots. I'm now looking for either a pilot or new orders. <laughs> <laughs> the Marine Captain's eye plates blink, every Captain. The Marine Sergeant's eye plates blink. Brother Sergeant Middling Nicholas of Havoc Company. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You punched back into the ship. Aye, sir. If we make it out of this, I will see you commended for your bravery, Captain. Would be an honor, sir. If only my own Captain showed the same level of courage. I couldn't see him. Whoa. Cavalierly charging into the face of danger. Well... Midding. <laughs> Meanwhile, stay at the bridge. <laughs> I saved middling Nich Nicholas's young life. You tried, you tried to kill him. Yeah, but I also saved his life at one point, I think. <laughs> yeah, after... Do they, do they counteract each other like that? And technically, when I let him live in that tournament, you know, I technically saved his life there. It wasn't well. a tournament, it was a trial to the death with fisticuffs. <laughs> The, the details don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> they do to him. Well, you don't get I one free murder attempt if you save him. someone's life. I rank higher than him, so what I say matters, what he says doesn't. It's not what the fist said. So, <clears throat> well, suffice to say, we need to link up with other surviving squads. 
We also have to get out of here soon before the Akareth catch up with us. Reinforcements will be coming. Uh, the captain turns away as he starts to contact someone on the Vox. Meanwhile, at the bridge, seconds after you've pushed into your little fortified enclave. Oh, well, I guess breach in the, the barricades, rather. Naki, you get a fairly patchy call from one of the squads, middling Nicholas's squad, stating that they've been relieved by me forces. You don't know what me forces are, but whatever. The point is they're on the way. Uh, asking for like fresh instructions or, or what to do. They're, otherwise, they're still heading towards the bridge. I will continue to let you think on that. Meanwhile, the Z, what are we up to? Um, I believe I've plotted a route to the big gun to insert some explosives on the way with my one uh, Terminator backup. And we're going to go relieve the yeah. ship of its big gun. Yeah, I don't think it was a direct route to the big gun. I think it was like a series of sites located along the moorings of the big gun. Yeah, it, it's the fastest way we could get there while picking up the explosives that we need. Exactly, and otherwise you just kind of like let the murder disperse throughout the ship. Well, not yeah. Like, I tried to get them you, to come you with tried me. Tried to rally them, yeah, but then they've yeah, done they've done did. their murder crazy thing and they're they're murdering. Yeah, I got one, but that was it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's one more than people usually manage when they fail to command the murder. Yeah, that's true. And it's not like they don't have their skin lust up, which tends to confuse things. Okay. So, things are actually working pretty much in your to your benefit here, Nazim. Uh, you have a perfect idea of where the Akareth on the ship uh, are on the ship and where to go. Um, in addition to that, the Akareth that ordinarily would be hunting you are being drawn off in a million different directions. There's a huge majority of them heading straight towards the bridge to reinforce that before that suffers the same fate as the warp drives. Uh, in addition to that, there's various uh, large-ish groupings that are currently trying to pin down, uh, pin down, eliminate the assorted Terminator squads they've still got pinned down. But, you know, Terminators and Cataphracti, a lot of them have found uh, defensive positions and they're digging in, or they're continuing to move and not giving the Akareth a stable target to ambush. Um, there's also, like, vast swarms that are still operating mm. the areas they can, but because they're losing so many people, or so many aliens, rather, they're having to draw crew from all over the ship to uh, continue filling skilled positions. And then in addition to that, you have the murder just dispersing behind you, which is in and of itself sowing chaos and havoc. They're already going to start taking massive casualties, but they've broken into what you think is the Akareth crew quarters? <laughs> <laughs> Which means that you actually have a moderately clear path to do the horrible thing you want to do. The Akareth also have no way of knowing, at least as far as you're aware, that you know what you do. What you do. Yep. Um, am I able to radio um, Mackie and let him know that there are heavy reinforcements heading his way? You can try. Yep, I'd like to try, please. Logic over intelligence at a plus ten, please. Okay. Yes! Uh, uh, give me two, three dos. Three dos. Okay, so it's a little bit scratchy, but you can uh, make out every word distinctly. Maki, from your point of view, seconds after middling Nicholas gets off the horn, uh, you get a call in from the Z on the blower, a specific message indicating that there's large, uh, large amounts of reinforcements heading your way. Enemy reinforcements. Enemy reinforcements. Sorry, yes, you were there. Okay, yeah. But, like, that's <laughs> super clear. Yeah. <laughs> Why must I be on this emotional roller coaster with you, Nick? You know you Why love it. On the right. Oh. Just keep oh. your arms and legs inside the ride at all times. Screaming is encouraged, if not mandatory. <laughs> yes. So, young Nicholas, what would you like to roll for your fantastic bombing extravaganza? Um, as I'm just kind of doing the old shortcut with the chain fist to get to where I need to do, need to be and decapitating you, who you, is holding what I need. You don't even need to be doing the shortcut with the chain fist thing, because previously you were using like a crude, I know it's that way, so I'm going to chain fist that way. Now, because you know where you're going, you can just run through corridors and only chain fist when it would be quicker. 
So you're actually going um, faster. Can I, um... Uh, I'm trying to find a skill to go with it, but intelligence... Well, what do you want like, to do? Like, root. Um, basically, the fastest and... Uh, That's navigate, then, right? Navigate surface. Navigate. Yes, navigate, yeah. Which you actually even have a plus ten in. You jammy shit. <laughs> All right, I will take navigate surface over perception, and we're going to call it for all the distractions. The fact you know exactly where you're going in the optimum route to get there, and uh, uh, getting Spidey sense alerts from your pal, I will give you a plus twenty. Cool. So that's net net plus thirty then, right? I believe so. Cool. Oh wait, don't you have enhanced senses? Oh, I do, yeah. So another plus thing on top of that. Yeah. Uh, mm. Eighty. So it's still only two dos. That is fair. However, two dos is enough. Uh, the Akareth is swarming with easily hundreds of thousands of uh, the Akareth. The mothership is swarming with easily hundreds of thousands of Akareth, if not maybe just under a million at this point. Even knowing exactly where they are and exactly what to do and exactly where to go, avoiding them in so much as you can is a big problem, especially whilst trying to keep your single Terminator retinue following along. Nevertheless, you do just about manage it. You pass through one two, three, four, five positions in a row, steadily destroying each mooring before an alarm begins to sound. Or rather not sound. Sound is the, the wrong way of phrasing it. Instead, you feel a strong emotion pulse through you. Back in a sec. It's an emotion a frustration of annoyance. Almost the exact same feeling as when you stub your toe, and it's gone as quickly as it arrives. And then, a microsecond later, it pulses again. And this continues on and on and on and on and on. A uh, quick check with your compatriot indicates that they too are feeling the exact same thing. And you can see these sort of uh, ornate square shapes that have been in many of the rooms that you've passed so far. Mostly inert. Uh, and now pulsing and vibrating in tune with each pulse of emotion. You're about half of the way to the final mooring point, nearest the front of the ship. What do? Um, how many is... Is it like uh, there's a square thing per mooring, or they're just dotted around as I'm moving? The square things are dotted around as you're moving. They've been in most, but not all, corridors uh, and quite a few of the rooms you've been through. Uh, they've just started to pulse like this. Uh, they look more kind of... I'm assuming... They don't look like obsidian, I'm assuming? Do they no, look not at all. Techie they're... and square? Or yeah. are they like mushroom and square? Techie and square. Techie and square, but human design or xenos design? Uh, difficult to tell. It could be exotic human. Um, they don't like immediately offend your eyes in a vomity way, but neither does a lot of stuff here that's like transparently made for Xenos use or by Xenos hands. Mm. Um, can I? Uh, uh, I guess a reading on it. You can do a senescence check real quick. Uh, I'm thinking reading my actual psychic power. You I'm just checking if it's object or if it's a person. It has to be a person. We've talked about it before. We have. Fuck. But yeah, just a quick sign. I see inside that'll do. Yeah, I'll take Sinesi into a perception at plus 30. Nope. <laughs> 99. You stop to do a quick reading, and the Terminator all but barrels into you and pushes you on. Brother psychiatrist, okay. we have no time to stop. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, cool. Okay, yeah, let's barrel on to the last point, and I'm going to radio the obsidian heart and let them know. Um, I hope you can sheath this big gun. Um, Sadly, comms with the obsidian heart, no matter how. Much oh no, it's just down, down, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's nothing. <laughs> well, hopefully they're watching. <laughs> well, they don't have any way of catching it anyway. So, okay. Actually, that's a good point. 
to... I know that it can't catch it, right? But I'm trying to relieve it off the, off the ship. Yeah. I think your assumption right? is that the ship's going to get down at some point and you want the gun to be off it when that happens. Okay. How's the structural integrity going of the, the overall ship before I blow this last bearing? Other than the rust and the like horrific... Um, what's it called? shuddering and juddering and screeching and shattering that you can hear all around you. It doesn't seem to be noticeably worse than it was like 20, 30 minutes ago. But also, it's difficult to tell that something like this is going to happen up until something, say, literally snaps in half. Yeah. Um, and just to clarify, um, after blowing this last... I thought what it's called now. Um, bulkhead, whatever. Yeah. Um, Will the gun be completely and utterly severed from the ship, or just mainly you kind of cut away from it? No idea. If you'll recall correctly, this is a vague feeling you're getting from a spooky voice you met inside the alien ship. Not, not, not even the mapping and so forth of the entire ship. The mapping does not give you a com comprehensive understanding of the architecture. That's fair enough. I just want to point out one thing Nick has never not trusted a spooky voice. That's just appeared in his head. I just want to make this. You all know this. I know we're all aware of this. I just want it just triply put down for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing damage to the ship. It's a good thing, right? <laughs> Not if I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on it as well. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's um, operating half an hour in the future, comparative to you, Ollie. By uh, you might well be dead by this point. <laughs> I see. Um. <laughs> is it bad that's genuinely a silver lining <laughs> screw it let's blow it fell faster right indeed you barrel on through to the uh, the last point most of the things you've blown so far have been uh, they look like structural supports of a kind uh, reinforced with girders often vast bulbous things this this is an almost alarmingly slender thing, barely a metre thick. Shouldn't take too long at all to cut through with even your chainsaw, and you can hear it stretching and groaning. The surface seems to roil as you look at it, and you don't even have to try to use your senescence to realise that it's psychoactive. Oh. The feeling pulses in your head. First that stub toe thing, and then the same familiar sensation. The knowledge that you need to sever this cord. <coughs> there are no Akareth in this room. It looks like it should have armed guards. You can see multiple uh, sandbag defensive points. Uh, what's clearly a sort of fairly well hidden sniper's nest, but now that you're like further into the room you can see exactly where it is, because the perspective's changed. Uh, but it's deserted. You haven't been paying attention far enough in advance to know where the Akareth have gone, but your life sense does tell you that they're not, uh, that there's none near here. The closest one is like five, six rooms away, and it's frantically manning some kind of pumping station. Oh. Um, so, how, how thick, how thick is this thing again? Was it a meter or is it a foot? About a meter. About a meter. So I couldn't cleanly swing through it with uh, my sword or my fist. It'd take a few swings, right? It would take a few swings, but you have your, uh, what's it called? Your mate there with the chain fist is probably who's been tackling a lot of this stuff for you, so that you don't have to, like, annihilate your sword. <laughs> okay, um, let's, let's have at it. Let's take this thing out. I'm assuming sure this is, like, the control mechanism or something. It's, like, psychically bound to the ship or something. Zoom away. Your Terminator compatriot nods. It will be done, brother psychiatrist. Marches up and swings his chain fist into it. I stop him before, like, the last swing. There's an all-too-human scream emanating from all of the room around you as the uh, chain fist makes contact with the cord. It takes you a moment to place the voice, but it sounds like the voice of the uh, the face. As mentioned, you stop it before the final swing. 
The screaming dies away a little bit, and that sensation, that need in your head to sever that last strand, balloons. What do? I draw my power sword and say to him, learn from this. <laughs> and just go, it's all about the chain reaction. <laughs> and just swipe the last one. You fucking... You don't want him to say that he killed it with his chain fist. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll let him do it. I was like, remember this. It's all about the chain reaction and gesture for him to swing it. I'll let, he's been doing it. I'm going to let him do it. I'm not going to take this from him. <laughs> Swish and flick. <laughs> Wingardium Gunnup Blusa. Everyone gets a bonus XP at the end of the session for that. <laughs> Wait, is it the Wingardium Leviosa or...? <laughs> That's not what he said. <laughs> oh. So, the Terminator, a veteran of many battles, highly confused, draped in the skins of his enemies, nods and <laughs> cuts the uh, last bit of uh, psychoactive string, if that's what you would call it. Did you just term explain war to another Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> but he's the ship's psychiatrist, and that's his right. <laughs> <clears throat> and almost gingerly cuts the last strip. The screaming echoes out and then stops. Your life sense collapses in on itself, dissipating. And then you hear a less human scream. A scream of metal. A scream of tearing superstructure. A scream the scream of a ship quake. Meanwhile, half an hour in the past, back on the Obsidian Heart. <coughs> what are we up to, Koya and Kuzco? I believe Kuzco is taking over the firing solutions and, o and command for the uh, gun batteries of the ship. Yeah. And I am leading uh, armsmen and defensive personnel to repel the Akareth invaders. Fair, fair. Okay. Let's have a thing. So, the Akareth have mostly boarded uh, around the outside of the munition holes. They're currently fighting their way in. There's also some near Macro Cannon D, uh, and a few trying to get into the plasma drive. So that's much more heavily defended than either of the other two places. Um, where would you like to go personally, and how would you like to deal with this? So, where was the first lot again? Sorry, there were some macro cannon B, some of the plasma drives. Uh, macro cannon D, the plasma drive, and the munition holds. Mm. I'm going to take out the stuff at the macro cannons. We need those online. It is entirely fair. Okay. I will take a... What forces are you taking now? You were going to take some of the tactical company that you've still got with you, right? Some of the tactical company I've got with me, and I'm taking command of the defensive armsmen. Fair, fair. Okay. So, with that, you pile in to one of the crew... Uh, one of the ships. You know, I hate to say it, but there is absolutely no way that on a ship of this size, easy to get round in a hurry from time to time, you wouldn't have, like, tiny buggies. And those buggies wouldn't be adapted for Astartes frames. So I apologize if these sort of Astartes indoor car things ruin every, uh, ruin anyone's uh, illusions, but in order to save you not having to walk from the bridge, you, your emergency response, uh, we'll call it two squads of Astartes, uh, and whatever armsmen you can gather up along the way to reinforce whoever's already there, begin speeding down towards Macro Cannon D. It's a comparatively trick, uh, trick, quick route along the conveyor way, and then you're able to get priority on the lift plat, and then along the next conveyor way, before you arrive at Macro Cannon D. You can hear fire from within, but also the cries of yelled orders, and the intermittent boom of the macro cannon itself being fired. The gun is still operational, but it's under assault from within. Pushing into the room, 
through its vast double doors, one of the main entrances to the section. You can see the colossal, almost cathedral-sized segment of the ship has somewhere between 30 and 50 Akareth in it. Rather than the defensive positions you've seen in many instances of them previously, they're moving in squads of two and three, causing as much chaos as they can. Grenades hucked this way and that, severing whatever power lines they can get to, generally trying to make a nuisance of themselves before they're taken down. What do? Can we see anywhere where they're specifically coming from? Are they swarming in from all angles, or just are they specifically coming from a certain point? You can see where they cut in. So it looks like this is one of the ones where they managed to have a boarding torpedo turned around and then like boosted it back over. Um, are they still coming from the boarding torpedo? They are not still coming from the boarding torpedo. It has disgorged its cargo. Men. Oh, in which case I'd like to turn to the two squads I have with me. Men. Spread out. Initiate hunter-killer protocol. Eliminate the Xenon. Armsmen. Defend those power cables. Take out any UC. Shoot any UC throwing grenades and or with power weapons to take out the, that could pose a threat to the weaponry. On the double. Okay. I will take a... We'll call it a weapon skill for the Space Marines. We'll give you a plus 20. This is very much your jam. Uh, and a Principia Bellicosa roll. Ah, uh, no, fuck it. It's a command roll. Command roll for the Armsman. Okay, so is it just a flat weapon skill? Uh, uh, I said plus 20, didn't I? Yes, but is it just flat weapon skill with plus 20? Uh, no, yes. No. Cool. Okay. That's... Two, one, three degrees of success for the Space Marines, and then... Command. That's only one degree of success, but I'll take it. Jesus. Your command's high. Yes, there's a reason for that. <laughs> so, you don't have all the resources you would like. There's not nearly enough armsmen here. Uh, presumably more than a few have been drawn off towards the pectoral cargo fin, uh, cargo tree fin to help fight off the night incursion. <clears throat> but you have enough to get the job done. There, with moderate to heavy casualties, perhaps 80, 100 armsmen, dead or heavily wounded, uh, able to hold off the Akareth from most of the major remaining power stations. <clears throat> Your Astartes, likewise, what was the DOS on that? Two or three? Three. Your Astartes are able to relatively quickly, within five, ten minutes, hunt down and butcher the assorted minor groups of Akareth. Especially in such small uh, squads, they pose way less of a threat to organize the Starties on home ground. A speedy check-in with the Magos, uh, lead Magos manning the macro cannon, indicates that they've lost no more than 11-10% firing efficiency, and uh, temporary repairs will be able to get that down to perhaps 5 Reports are still flooding in from the munition holes in the plasma drive. The drive is much more heavily defended, and so is doing better, but they seem to be facing a much more consistent flow of Akareth. The munitions holds, they're mostly concerned that the Akareth are going to perform some too effective sabotage before they can catch them. There's far fewer down there, but their potential for destruction is significantly higher. Where do you prioritize next? And whilst you're thinking of that, let's pop I, over uh, to... I have an idea. I, I have a plan for this that you could be doing in the background that I have now. No, it's fine. We can hear it now. I was going to go over to Carl. Right, excellent. In which case, we will swing... P whilst we whilst we pull our forces from Macro Cannon D, I shall send word for the forces that are currently guarding the Auxiliary Plasma Drive that will be falling back as their role is taken over by the forces from the Forge Shrine to come with us. Then we shall... As we head down past the primary hangar, I shall divert up towards the plasma drive, and I shall send a bulk of my force to hold the munition hold. Uh, could you explain that last bit to me again? Sorry, I can't so understand. basically, I'm pulling the pulling the people off. Uh, all the people who were down in the petrol cargo tree fin, who have retreated up to the plasma drive as per ordered. E. Yeah. Well, I'm I pulling think it was... them off the line with the pl with them, and then I'm sending them down into the munition holds to guard and stop the Akareth incursions, while I take the rest of my forces to the plasma drives. Sorry, I don't think it was everyone pulled out uh, of the cargo tree fin to reinforce the plasma drive. I think it was just like reinforce the plasma drive. 
Um, otherwise, you'd have given the knights like free reign over the interior of your ship if they just walked past the plasma, uh, auxiliary plasma drive. So you've still got some fighters, presumably some remnant piss-scared fighters left in the pectoral cargo tree fin, just so you're aware. Uh, yeah, but they're not going to be my problem for this too too much longer, sadly. <laughs> I don't think I can stop Manabi Vera. <laughs> that is fair. Okay. So, your orders go out, and reluctantly people move to pull back. Though there are grumbles of what this means for Pater Obsidia over the Vox network. Wisps and ghosts. Strange phrase, don't think you've run across that before. <laughs> Somewhere performing quiet research, uh, Coatlemox shudders like someone's walked over his grave. I'm so sorry, Benji. My brain is entirely blanked on your plan. Um, you were taking your, uh, you were ordering forces back from the auxiliary plasma drive so that the Mechanicum troops could take over there. Uh, and then you were moving to do, uh, to reinforce the plasma drive whilst you send the bulk of the forces that you currently have with you to the munition holds. Was that it? Or was it the, the bulk of the forces that, the forces I pulled off the aux- auxiliary plasma drive will be sent to the munition holds. The rest of the forces with me will t- retake the plasma drives. Okay, cool. Now I'm following you. Sorry, brain. It's been a long day. Okay. You know what I think this calls for, for uh, since you're going cross-ship? I will take a drive test, please. I will give you... Son of a bitch. I will give you a plus ten as you've got one oh, hell wait, of priority I, traffic. Wait, I have that generic because I got it being a tactical marine. Scoot, scoot. Oh, <laughs> did you say plus ten? I did say yeah. That's a failure. I'm going to re-roll. Oh, that's only one degree. Uh, yeah, it's only one degree of failure. Only one degree of failure. <laughs> you take your convoy uh, west as best you can. Oh, west, uh, spinewood. I suppose drivewood, drivewood, and prowwood would be the things. Prow and bow, bow. Fuck, I don't remember yeah, how ships bow. work. Bow. Thank you. The bow is the rear, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you take your uh, little convoy bowward. But between people frantically uh, bringing traffic, uh, between vital traffic uh, and just good old fashioned traffic jams, you're moving at a comparatively slow pace, much less speed than you would like. Uh, and reports from the plasma drives begin to intensify. Minor damage has been taken to some of the generators and uh, secondary. Power requirement, uh, power using things across the ship are being shut down. Most keyly, the uh, uh, several of the more important quarters, officers' quarters, the astropathic choir, the observation gallery, the navigators' quarters. A load of these things are being taken offline entirely, which is extremely bad for them, as well as some of the uh, less important or more heavily damaged retro thrusters. You arrive at the plasma drive just in time to see its vast gilded doors explode inwards and a swarm of dozens, no, several hundred Akareth begin to flow into the room from the outside. You go to issue an order when a mighty boom rocks the ship. Your Vox network momentarily collapses, screeching in on itself, and then reboots, opens back up to a flurry of system complaints, uh, as well as reports flooding in from all across the ship of major damage. Either you've taken a major hit, or, meanwhile, on the bridge... Fucking Verith has vented the plasma drives, isn't he? Kuzco. Manabi Verith has just vented the auxiliary plasma drive. Yeah, I'm currently, you know, the dog in the burning house. This is fine. Everything's fine. This has caused severe damage to the pectoral cargo tree fin. It is barely secured and is in fact in danger of falling off the ship. The good news is this has taken out six of the knights. You had seven by this point. Um, more have bought it since. <laughs> Uh, yes, this has taken out six of the knights who were on board. 
slagged or otherwise disabled. Sorry? Who did we lose? Lost Ollie. Did we lose Ollie? Yeah. He's back. There we go. Six of the night's gone. But a seventh, rather than assault the auxiliary plasma drive, has pushed onwards slightly further and is now loose just beneath the main conveyor way on the ship. Koya is far to the rear, trying to defend the plasma drive, and a good deal of your armsmen are currently rooting through the munition holes, trying to stop the Akareth from causing a second major explosion directly beneath the primary hangar, and perhaps worse, directly next to your life sustainers. Kuzco, what do? I would like to lament that I was not trained for this. I'm a goddamn medic. Um, <laughs> Indeed. A uh, nearby rating turns to you. Sir, the knight is, I believe, heading into either the secondary hangar or worse, potentially directly up into the main conveyor way. If it reaches that traffic or grind to a halt, what should we do? Would you like some time to think it over? Carl? Carl? Mic check? I hear you. Oh, oh I hear you. Yeah. I, I, no, I can't hear him either. Hello? Oh, there he is. Oh, oh I can't. Yes, yes, now I can hear you. Ah, okay. I was going to. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to send a status report to uh, Brother Captain Coyer, as well as an attempt to contact uh, Manavi Verith. And also uh, let him know that uh, he missed one! <laughs> the Fortrine informs you that Manabi Verith is currently AWOL. Uh, the machine spirits were not cooperative uh, with the overloading of the auxiliary drive, and Manabi had to do it in person. So they're not sure what the status there is. He might be dead. Like, part of me wants that to be so, but at the same time, the other part of me, the greater part of me, thinks that that would have been an easy escape. Um, Good dirt there, buddy. I mean, yeah. Uh, other than that, is it possible to enact any security protocols, like locking down bulkheads or anything? Like, I know it would pretty much be the equivalent of putting cardboard in front of the knight, but anything that can slow him down. Or her. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you can enact emergency security protocols and slam shut every bulkhead in front of them. They're also actually, I was going to say they're on a lift plat and you could just stop the lift plat from working, which would work against most walkers. The issue is these are jetpack knights and therefore if the lift plat stops working, it'll just keep flying upwards and blast through whatever's up top. Um, and you make all the lift plats just go down. So they're just, you're throwing lift plats at the knights. Yeah, like if there's a lift plat above it, like, <laughs> just send them flying at it. Sure, you, dis- you disengage, uh, you have the safety uh, protocols on the lift plat disengaged, uh, and the machine spirit prodded into a horrific depression. It sent itself hurtling downwards. What else you got? Um, oh man, like, part of me wants to try and check the status of the rest of the ship, because, I mean, part of me is concerned that there are going to be, um, uh, I say, power shortages? Oh, there definitely are. Uh, you might even have to take one of the lad's batteries offline if you're, not luck- uh, if you're unlucky. Um, but yeah, uh, like, I say, the general status report. Yeah, Koya, you're, you're getting a, something of a status report from, uh, uh, what's it called? From Cusco, but the internal Vox network is, is jammed with a mass of overlapping casualty reports, emergency reports, uh, and the Mechanicum engaging in their usual mini schism. Uh, between those who think the drive had to be overloaded and those who think the the drive should never have been overloaded. So they're going through their little private civil war there. You're getting some idea that there might be a survivor loose on the ship, but it's difficult to tell where or how damaged it would be. 
Also, what would you like to do with the Zachareth? Well, I'm going to leave the forces I have in opposing them, obviously. <laughs> okay. Sword. It's not a sword, is it? What do you have as a weapon? I forget. Uh, I've got my uh, mastercrafted spear. Uh, yeah, it's a power spear, right? Yes. Yes. Spear held high. Two squads of Astartes at your back, whatever armsmen you could gather along the way, uh, and a mob of impressed ratings from the rating quarters, presumably brought down, as well as some incredibly pissed off Skitari and a small handful of magi collected from the Forge Shrine on the way, already moving to reinforce the plasma drive. You full on charge in after the Akareth swarm attempting to flank. Well, I say attempting. This is obviously a successful flank, but we'll see how it goes. Koya. I will take weapon skill at a minus 10, please. You can have your spear bonus. Any skills with this? Um, feels like it's a direct charge, right? I don't know if there's a skill that would cover it. Yeah, I think this is more just personal combat, so I think just weapon skill and your weapons bonus would be fine. That is a pass of one degree. <laughs> is it? Didn't you just say it was a best quality spear? Yeah, which gives me plus ten. Uh, yeah, which puts me to fifty-five, and then you get minus ten. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, it I didn't get minus ten. Yep, no, you're entirely correct. I'm dumb. Brain, no think. Math's good. One degree of success. You and your whole, uh, you and your motley assortment of troops charge in after the Akareth. It's not strategic work. It's not smart work. It is a bloody butcher's bill. A marine to the side of you is blown apart by an Akareth melter gun, only for the melter gunner to be hacked down by you a second later. You see two armsmen go up in a ball of fire, detonated by a handheld explosive desi- uh, device wielded by one of the Akareth. Friendly fire scythes down a nearby rating. Uh, a Majos in front of you is torn apart by perhaps a looted Eldar weapon? Difficult to tell. Akareth are cut down all around you. Sorry, I was reading Carl's thing. God damn it. Uh, <coughs> Akareth are cut down all around you. Flayed by Volkites, riddled with autogun bullets, bludgeoned by staves and sticks, or cut apart by chainsaws. Makahuitl pattern, whirring and tearing the Xenos into bloody gobbets. Your power spear scything through this one and that, chopping, thrusting, Stabbing. The fight lasts perhaps two, three minutes. It's comparatively brief, and after that there's just scant minor skirmishes left. You do, however, successfully break the back of the Akareth assault before they're able to do significant damage to the main drives. That's when another explosion rocks the ship. On the bridge! Kuzco! You are getting reports of an explosion you were not expecting from the munition holds. It's the worst place to get explosions you don't expect. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you mentioned that like there were dudes uh, oh, yeah. going Sorry, off that true, way. Actually. So suspected even. May even have expected. Depends how pessimistic you were. But yes, it uh, looks like the Akareth managed to touch off something in the munition holds. They are compartmentalized, so it's not all of your munitions gone up at once. Uh, but it looks like one of the medium tier holds Tens of thousands of rounds, probably a good deal of macro can ammunition. Uh, ammunition. Fuck knows how much. Oh, I suppose that probably wouldn't be explosive generally. Um, <clears throat> fuck knows how much in the way of weapons, arms and armor, munitions, equipment has just gone up in smoke and plasma. And more importantly, it's taken out a chunk from the primary hangar, as well as more than a little from the life sustainers and blown a hole clear through the hull. What to do? Uh... Like, I mean, do we have any forces available to go and confirm the current status of uh, the Akareth present? Because, like, part of me is terrified that they're actually, like, they can survive in the void, at least for a time. 
Fair. Uh, well, you're not in the void. You're in the poisonous atmosphere. Oh, that's of the right. Gas yeah, I giant, forgot. Which yeah. is now seeping into your ship. I mean, six and one half a dozen the other. But other than that, you need to lock down any bulkheads around the area. That is fair. Uh, so the, you can seal off the primary hangar, um, and you can have your sort of uh, magi in the hangar do their best to seal up the hole into the munition holes as quickly as possible. You could uh, also. also um, life support systems, because I don't want that shit going through into the vents and stuff. Also very true. Um, you can... I even mark the vents on the map. Or the major ones, at least. Um, <coughs> you can also have armsmen uh, and a good deal of ratings redirected from the primary hangar to flood the munitions holds and root out any remaining Akareth. But... That would lower the efficiency of the operations of the primary hangar, which is currently manning some pretty heavy um, resting and uh, resting and refueling, refueling and rearming runs. It's not just your craft; it's craft from every ship in the fleet, and even some friendly. I suppose you wouldn't be letting night craft in actually at this point, honestly, given they've already attacked you. They are not. Friend and foe. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there might be like one or two that were on board already that have been impounded. Um, but yes, so you're essentially as the major hangar for the entire fleet, your primary hangar is running on overdrive, uh, so you could divert men from there, but it would reduce the efficiency of roll, so decision, please. Um, uh, this is like a shitty six weeks after. Oh, fuck it, I'll just roll for it. Um, can we just do an odds or evens? Yeah, we can do an odds or evens if it makes you feel better. Yeah. Um, odds. Even. Uh, Did I, I get it in time? I think you got that in just in time, you jammy bugger. That was like a microsecond difference. That is indeed evens. Wait. We were, oh, was that for to see if you could get the right call or not? Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, I was going to change, like, before you uh, rolled, uh, say, just uh, what you call it? if I get it right, then, I mean, it's probably oh. going to. Fair, yeah, it shouldn't. I wouldn't really have given you odds or evens, but is it the right call or not? It should have been for like which one do you do, really. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, so, I guess we, that was, we've kind of screwed that one. Uh, well, uh, no, no, this is uh, I'm gonna bury my head in the sand, just let the security protocols lock down and hope that if they are still alive after that explosion, then they're not going to be getting out. Mm. And for the time, like, because I feel the greater good of the flotilla is more important right now. That is fair. Uh, call me odds or evens again. Let's let's call you luck on this one. Uh, odds. Okay, noted. Meanwhile, a reply. Uh, we should switch over again, right? Actually, let's see what's happening on the bridge. The, the other bridge, different bridge this time. Scary bridge, Mackie. You've, you've just had your sort of comms through. What do? Don't say again, sorry. You've just had your assorted comms through. Well, first one from Middling Nicholas, and then one from Nazim. If I remember rightly, Middling Nicholas is telling me that I have reinforcements coming my way, and Nazim has called to tell me I've got enemy reinforcements coming my way. Uh, yes, Middling Nicholas called through to say, like, they've been relieved by some Imperial Army guys. Uh, that seems... Oh, no, he said he'd been relieved by some me troops, uh, so that's weird. But, you know, he was cutting out. Uh, and that they were heading towards the bridge, but do you have any other orders for them? Like, what's what's going on? They've not heard from anyone in a while. Uh, and yeah, Nazim was saying that he's he, he thinks that there are colossal amounts of enemy troops heading towards their bridge. Cool, okay. Um, I'm First thing I'm going to do then is radio out to my, to my reinforcements with the me troops, and tell them uh, head to the bridge Heavy, expect heavy resistance. Um, well, well, meet us at the bridge. We're about to face an army of angry fertilizer. Okay. You know the drill. Logic over intelligence at a plus ten. Yeah. If five or under. I will remind you your ammunition is, on, is low as well. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 71. Uh, three degrees of failure. That is fair. Yeah, no one's reading your Vox transmissions but the Akareth. No worries. Um, cool. Okay. So I have forbidden law Xenos. I have forbidden scholastic law age of technology. 
I was wondering if I could use one of those to figure out. Uh, do do you, um, is this is a human style bridge, right? Yeah. So, do human style bridges generally tend to have some sort of seal the bulkheads from people who are invading? Yes, yeah, you cut through one such bulkhead. Yes, that's fine. I'm happy to still have one we can defend, I suppose, then, and uh, try and just find a button that can shut the emergency bulkheads and space anything around me, potentially. It wouldn't be able to space things. You're too far into the, like, guts of the ship. Oh, sorry, but, um, but you can try and, like, slam the... That's probably going to be a security check, actually. Do you have security? That's I don't have security. I, I was just thinking because, like, you know, I'm either recognizing the button via my scholastic nor of age of technology uh, in general, or my forbidden law of Xenos and how they like to arrange things. I'm trying to think if you would have that, like, a fire alarm where just anyone can slam the bulkheads shut or not. You would have, I feel like it kind of would be... Yeah, uh, that probably yeah. makes an amount of sense, right? Yeah. Like, because you wouldn't want just anyone to do it, but also in an emergency, you don't care. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I will take Age of Technology over Perception at a plus 20 to see if you can recognize anything that looks vaguely like a, um emergency slam the bulkheads shut button, which would at least lock you on, uh, in here with only a couple of thousand Akareth rather than a thousand, uh, a couple of thousand and counting. Cool. Uh, that is 60 or under. Yep, I make it. Casting your eye... <laughs> Fucking hell, what's your DOS? Five. Uh, five. Casting your eyes around for the nearest such button, you locate a pillar near you, which seems to have had the barricade built around it, and on the side of it, you swear in honest-to-God's high gothic, it even says, emergency, seal the bulkheads. <laughs> I look at it for a brief moment. I consider this an emergency. Slam it down. One of the nearby Terminators. Brother, what do you... You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Without even removing the safety glass, you sort of gently whack your chain fist uh, into it, pressing the button and shattering the external covering. <laughs> All around you, bulkheads begin slamming down. This has brought you maybe a minute or two before they can be unsealed inside. Which is a little um, bit of wiggle room. No, is, there, sorry. is there a, wi- uh, a window out into the void? No, you're say? in the guts of the space. Oh, yeah, okay. I still just wondered if there maybe was like some something like that. Yeah, uh, it's not uncommon for bridges to have that, but it's also, it depends on the ship. Not all bridges yeah, are like... It is, it is space hulky, I suppose. Um, it's actually not. It's uh, more mass conveyor-like in design. It's, it's a single colossal chassis. But I thought it was like full of like weird little alien versions of ships inside of it, and had like lots of weird alien tech as well as being a human ship. Uh, we've not done the little ships inside of it thing, I don't think. But it does have lots of weird alien tech because it's been developed for uh, it's been either developed or adapted for use by aliens. Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, okay, a couple of minutes. Um, so, as mentioned, you're still locked in here with a couple of thousand Akareth most of whom are armed, uh, maybe a quarter to a third of them, probably a bit more than that, we'll call it two-fifths, uh, likely bridge crew, and are still desperately carrying on their stations as best they can. There's still a good few in, like, prepared positions, the reinforcements who swarmed in, and then the, like, pre-prepared uh, larger bubbles and things that were up on the walls that had snipers and things that were shooting down at you. Mm. Um, you're in a small, like, not a bubble of rubble and wreckage, but you're in a slightly more covered area. Uh, can I see the um, the helmsman? You can see a number of candidates for what would look to you like places that the helmsman would be standing, on which there are numerous Akareth. Okay. Um, first off, I'm going to order my guys to protect me as I take out the uh, the various helmsmen I can see. I don't think your weapon's that long a range, right? It's not. I would probably have to go up to them. I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you can definitely do that. As I mentioned last time, you're at this point starting to run a bit low on ammunition. Yeah. So you can probably do this with your gun, and then you'd be more or less out between like running between the different spots. Uh, the fallen brothers behind us, do they have any ammunition left on them? If they did, you wouldn't be able to get it out 
I don't think it's not usually the. It's supposed to be in the weapons, actually. You probably could get it out, but it's likely not in a good position. Remember, yeah, yeah. them being terminators, they weren't just felled by like a stray shot. They were pulped by hundreds of shots at once. So the twisted remnants of their armor could maybe be salvaged, but it's unlikely that their weapons are in a fit enough state for you to even disengage the ammunition. That's fine. Uh... I'm so sorry, Ollie. You've got such a difficult fucking situation here. I like. You know, Nicholas has accidentally and deliberately managed to offload all of the difficulty that he should have had onto you, effectively. I'm sorry. There are so many less people. I'm sorry. It's, if anything, impressive. I just feel bad for Ollie. Um, <laughs> Locked in a room with thousands of angry Xenos all oh, well, trying no, no, to no. kill him and lacking ammunition. I'm not locked in a room with them. They're what? locked in a room with me. All right, Ollie. What are we doing? What's Mackie going to do? Mackie is going to... Um, can I... Do I have enough ammunition to scythe through roughly the Xenos I see in front of me in, in general, like with me and my squad, to take out like a chunk of them? Yeah, as mentioned, I think you've probably got enough ammunition left between you that you could make your way to most of the, like, what look like the bridge spots... Uh, the the likely spots for the helmsman to be, and then cut those Akareth down and the Akareth in between them. But after that, you basically that. be out. I'm going to do that. Okay. Well, really, really going fucking all in. We ain't called the Havoc Squad for nothing. Okay. Uh, I admire your bravery. I will cautiously remind you that you can burn fate to survive, but you have to in some way be in a position where I could conceivably act of God save you. I mean, part of, uh, part of me thinks fall back to the room we came from um, and wait for reinforcements. The which room you came from is now the only entrance into the room which isn't sealed, which means it's the one that's pouring Akareth in. Oh, they came from behind, did they? Oh, in which yeah. case then I... Uh, they was described earlier, in fact. Those oh, were... Okay, sorry, I, must, I might have missed... I must have misheard. Um, well, I so can't I'm... go back. You... can't go forwards. Well, you can't go back the way you came, but yes. And and I also, I genuinely do admire the fucking death or glory attitude here if there's a job to do and we're damn well going to do it. Yeah, fuck um, it, there is a job to, there's a job here to do and fuck it, we're doing it. So I'm, I'm not trying to hint you towards, like, you must do this to survive, but also, if you'd like to survive, you should probably consider, con like, something. Survival I, woods. I, I would have been, if, if Nick hadn't steadfastly picked away every single one of my options, I'd be considering them right now. <laughs> <sighs> is uh, going down, like passing through the floor to the deck below an option. What the light I did occur to me. <laughs> you do have a chain fist. You do have uh, multiple chain fists. But let's see how that first one goes. Do you have any fate out of interest, Ollie? I have no fate, no. I am I so hoping fate. I am so fucking hoping for a hundo then. Okay, we're gonna call this ballistic skill at I'm not gonna be too mean, ballistic skill at minus ten. Okay. For well, the sheer number of times. If you can't escape, die well. Destroy the ship. I mean, if he can't escape, there's no Take shame. Take Nicholas with you. There's no shame in going down to... One degree of success. <laughs> there's no... Okay, well... <laughs> you know the rules. No degrees of failure means no lost Terminators. Take young Nicholas with you. <laughs> Make him pay for what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicholas gonna come back from the shit like, oh, I'm just doing my best. I didn't realize that I'd accidentally lose like dozens of sets of Terminator armor and fucking hundreds of marine lives. I had no idea. Well, he's gonna have big bonus points with the murder after this. That's for damn sure as biscuits. I gave him the skins. What murders left? Yeah, there ain't no murder left. The murder are the ones on the ship. There's only 60 murder on the ship. You've got hundreds of the murder in your grand company. They still have hundreds of Havoc, or at least tens of Havoc, right? In the yeah, only, only slightly over half of Havoc came on the ship. So yeah. they've taken a pretty heavy bashing, but you've still got at least 40 or yeah, so. Yeah, we launched the main assault for the, all of our Space Marine company from the Obsidian Heart, so a lot of the murder got put there. I suppose that's true, actually, yeah. 60 was only young Nicholas's group, so there's more than 60 on the ship. Yeah. But there's presumably some on the other ships as well. Like, 
at least near the cruisers, rather. But uh, they're also, I guess, less likely to be faring well. Yes, Benji's ongoing plan of just let the murder have enough skin to hang themselves with. Maybe one day they'll slip on the skin they've collected so much, and they'll fall into that giant pillowy softness and drown. Drown in their skins. Drown in the skin. So, Makrilo Totek and your six... No, it's five, two were lost, right? So it's six including you, so yeah, your five remaining Terminators identify no less than three sites which you think could be places where the, the helmsman is. They're sort of raised daises with silver gilt work uh, and Akareth in. You've not seen them wear clothing or uniforms or even decorative paint, but they do seem to be moving more authoritatively, uh, wriggling and tossing to and fro much more often than other Akareth. One by one, you punch your way to each of these platforms, both literally with your chain fists and less, uh, and more metaphorically with the last of your Volkite ammunition. Each in turn, the Akareth go down. Your shields miraculously hold, at least mostly, and when they don't, your armor holds, and other than that, you retain whatever cover you can. Now that you're more towards the sort of areas of the Akareth ship, uh, the Akareth bridge even, where their actual bridge crew are working, they're less keen to just flow, uh, throw flurries of fire or rogue grenades your way. They might cause more damage than you. Which, which gives you just about enough breathing room to be able to push to each day's in turn, clear it, as well as the Akareth near to it, and then be done. So as I clear each podium, I want to see if there's some sort of throttle-looking device. That's not really how void ships work, unfortunately. It's, it's not... Imagine, like, a cruise ship on steroids. You're not going to be able to find just one big control that does everything. Yeah. I did wonder if that might be the case. Um, cool. So the diocese are clear. I would like to look for some sort of acceleration or some sort of what looks like a throttle control. Maybe there are spare ones. Maybe there are multiple ones spread throughout the diocese. Something akin to that. You're, you're definitely not going to find a big, like, accelerate me throttle, I'm afraid. I'm sure I'm not going to find something exactly like that. Um... Hmm. Okay. Has my ear noticed anything since we killed the various helmsmen or helmsmen like aliens? Yes, yes you, you can, can feel, feel that the ship is shuddering and juddering a lot more than it should be. And in fact, we'll say that took you a good long while, which means actually the bulkheads will now even have probably opened up again and more and more accurate started to pour in, unfortunately. But you did so, have my reinforcements arrived as well? No, they were still a world of ship away, and there's a, like an army of hundreds of thousands of Akareth, or at least, no, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of ships, tens of thousands of Akareth, only tens of thousands between the like 14 guys, half of whom are regular humans, uh, and you. What about my various Havoc, my other Havoc squads? Are they the two that are pinned down are still pinned down. They're selling their lives dearly, but they're not really able to move anywhere. Okay. Um, I was going to say a thing. Sorry, you asked a question a second ago and my brain didn't... I was more well. looking for the big accelerator button if there is oh, something. Uh, yeah, sorry. So we're, we're just, I'm just going to say there's no big accelerator button. Um, I do I say, know? Sorry. Do I know how these ships accelerate? Do I know how the thrusters are engaged? Yeah, it, it would be like complex interfacing with assorted machines where it's probably a number of levers and such scattered around the place. Like, you need a large crew to operate a void ship. And for the same reason, uh, and, and for a variety of reasons, you don't want, like, just a big thruster make ship go fast, because that is a recipe for your ship being made to accidentally careen into things it shouldn't. Mm, so true. Um... If you maybe had a way of interfacing with a really specific uh, cogitator, but that's relying on their machine spirits being helpful enough for you to get in and you having that method of access. and I do not. Yeah. I do have demolitions trained. Do you have anything to demolish with? You used all of your... You've got nothing but chain fist left, in fact. Do the, um, the Akaref I've been killing, do they not have grenades? Um... I suppose they won't be Terminator. Yeah, they won't be like the special Terminator uh, ones we said you'd get. Okay. Um, 
And also, I think you must have been killing bridge crew at this point, or at least the ones that are nearest to your bridge crew. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I will officially say to you, Ollie, if you expect to survive this, now at this point where you're out of virtually everything and your reinforcements are paltry and quite cut off, if you would like your characters to survive, I would suggest trying to find some level of exit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, um, I'm thinking either cut through the floor or um, into into the decks below and fucking leg it. It is a void ship. You almost always have the option of cutting through the floor. I would then like to cut through the floor. I do not have high weapon skill is the issue. Um, but would I think it be... we'd call it a strength because you're going to be... You're aiming at a floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. You're definitely okay. going to hit it. It's going to be a because pre- you're not just cutting through a floor though. You're cutting through the floor around the bridge, which is going to be pretty heavily reinforced because that's not just like a thin floor. Yeah. That's a like we need this to survive if it gets accidentally fluke hit by a macro cannon shot. Yeah. Um, so I okay. would call that a strength at minus forty. Cool. So I have a strength of sixty, and then with my termi armor, I believe it's a pl- it's a times three. I have enhanced. Oh wait, yeah, enhanced. It's plus, plus thirty for termi drama. Plus thirty to all strength tests. And then my strength bonus is times two, I think, slash. Yeah, that only counts for the... Uh, your natural strength only comes out, uh, counts after yeah, the fact. Yeah, totally. So I'm actually negating everything you just threw at me, I think. Uh, no, no, sorry. Not, minus, it's net minus ten. Net, net minus ten. Quite that, at least. Going to see if there's anything else I can use. Recall suppression. No, mag boots. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Thing that um, yeah, I'm not saying anything. So minus ten total. So this is a fifty or under. Hundo, 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 hundo. Ah, four degrees of success. Fucking hell, Ollie! It's about time. And that's more yeah. than four because you have your unna- unnatural strength times two. Oh yeah, so it times um, three because he's wearing Terminator armor. Yeah, it's times three because I'm wearing Termi. So that is actually um, twelve degrees of success there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <sighs> Remember that time I charged a bridge and survived? <laughs> Thousands of aliens. At this point, in excess of 10,000 swarming over the bridge, a veritable sea of Akareth soldiers behind you. Skill shots pouring your way. Kephas, caution. Kephas? Oh, careful, careful. cautious. Mm-hmm. Before you start on that, did I say did I destroyed the podiums for control? I can't remember if I said that or not. I don't think you did explicitly, but I think it's fair to like retroactively say if you want to smash them up. I yeah. don't think that will have been a major extra extension efforts-wise. Yeah, cool. So you continue, please. No, entirely fair. Um, <clears throat> and definitely better to like check that as soon as possible. Um, cool. Careful, cautious skill shots snap off your way. Just a few per Akareth. But a few per Akareth when you're dealing with thousands upon thousands of angry, teeming aliens is a lot. It's time to leave. (laughs) Go, go, gadget, power fist, arm, chain thing. Hurling yourselves behind a bank of cogitators, your terminators cut directly into them and then start going down, throwing themselves and all of their weight against their chain fists, pushing down into a ventilation shaft. Not big enough for Terminator armor, but weak enough to give you a little bit of cover and a place to go. Using this to push along the floor without being able to take massive amounts of shots. You know, still dozens every second, but enough that they ping off your shield or your armor. Or even cut deep grooves in it, slowly wearing away the powerful ceramite layers. Ceramite. <clears throat> You're able to get to uh, a point where all six of you together can bring your chain fists there. A small alcove. And there, start cutting away, batting at the occasional Akareth who come after you. Grenades begin flowing into the hole, but not fast enough to uh, completely overwhelm your defences, and within a couple of minutes, you're able to puncture out of the bridge and into the floor below. You'd spent barely half an hour up there. A tense, nail-biting half an hour, every second feeling like years. 
stuck in this hole or that, wading through individual bits of combat. I suppose it wouldn't be half an hour, actually, no, by no stretch of the imagination. That's ten, ten minutes. Which still puts you 20 minutes back in time behind your Nicholas. So you've got five minutes of sesh left. Ollie? You have gained a fraction of a lead in order to try and maybe escape with your skin intact. Where do you take your Terminators? Um. Okay. Would this be a bad time to remind you that you got on the ship fire boarding torpedo? Uh, it would be, yes. It would be. Uh. <laughs> it's fine. The Imperial Army didn't come by, by boarding torpedo. They must have had uh, a craft or something, right? Uh, right. I'm going to see. Um, do, do we have like basic training and how? To, I mean, I know we have navigate surface. We don't really pilot. Uh, we don't basic training and pilot, do we? Nope. Um, we made it an optional to buy. Hmm. Guess what? I'm going to weirdly have next session. Um, no. Uh, 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 do I see any signs for hangars or anything like that close by? You most assuredly do not. Yes, we we are just below the bridge. There isn't going to be much in the way of hangars around here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start working my way sideways, I think, just trying to get to the side of the ship and down maybe. Following passages, I think, is probably the easiest way to do it. And doing this, we can't... I don't think I can sprint, but I can run. Okay. So you're going to do the old young Nicholas and chain fist your way through the ship in a specific direction and hope that works. Yes. Well, fortunately totally for you... Tom's middling Nick. <laughs> fortunately for you, you do have an entirely perfect Lyman's ear and thus are completely able to orientate yourself. Even though you would usually be utterly lost, you know exactly which direction you are facing, you jammy goit. <laughs> I'm also going to radio out to um, Middling Nicholas and tell them the bridge is the bridge has both been taken and fallen. <laughs> you never <laughs> took the bridge. You burst in, did a load of damage, and burst back out again. I, I would say there's no point. I, I, I'm going to vox out, being like uh, to the shuttle base. Escape now whilst we can. So you're issuing a full withdrawal. A full withdrawal, yeah. Are you only issuing that to Middling Nicholas, and just so that they're like no, remaining? Everyone, I, I'm, gonna, I'm doing another blanket vox. <laughs> I'm not doing what Young Nicholas does. <laughs> issuing a full withdrawal. Okay, cool. I will take um, the standard logic over intelligence at plus ten, please. Well, I make it. That is uh, logic over intelligence five. Two degrees of, of success. Okay. Uh, do you want to give me your wording real quick? Um, the bridge has been destroyed. This is no longer a viable target. Full retreat to the hangars. Escape by any means. You're issuing the uh, escape. Okay. Right. And then after that, I will take a speedy weapon skill at plus 20 test for your chain fistery. Sure. You um, can have your strength. Oh, no. Actually, there's probably a strength, right? Yeah, sorry. Strength. Yeah, In which okay. case, one next to plus 20. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, 60 or under. 100. And I can't re-roll it. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a dead man. Uh, it is. Uh, well, for so long. Unfortunate still, point. But still only four degrees of failure. It is, however, a hundo. It is, however, a hundo. Can I burn a feint to re-roll that? You cannot. As Benji has so often begged, we do not allow any, any leeway on that. Fate usage is fate usage. That's fine. That's fine by me. It is at this unfortunate junction that your Terminator suit shows a flaw in its power banks and runs out of energy. Well, he's dead then. Uh, well, if it runs out of energy, presumably the other Terminators can cut me out. Uh, not if they want you to live. Oh, okay. Can I can I not get out in any way? You can. Anywhere? You can actually still use a Terminator suit unpowered. Uh, it's, can you? You can. It. Uh, so I know power armor is a minus twenty on everything. Okay. I would yeah, assume like, it becomes a minus thirty or a minus forty. Like this is cataphracti Terminator armor. You can't run in that shit. Yeah. When it's powered, I don't think you can move in it if it's I, not powered. I think a minus 40 is still fair enough to give. 
Can I? Uh, is there not an emergency escape in this case? Blow the arm. There is not. Hmm. You uh, have to open the filters, the manual filters on your helmet, to talk to your fellow squad mates. And you'll have oh, to make a choice. Testing to do that because he can't move his arms. At, he's at a minus forty to move. God, uh, you, well, you wouldn't do that with your arms. You do that with something uh, either like linked into your black carapace. How would he not? Or... Because he hasn't got power. Yeah, he doesn't have like general power to the suit. Doesn't mean he's completely no, lacking no, no. power. No, no, no. There's only one power generator. It doesn't have backup. I think you're really oversimplifying how a piece of ancient tech is supposed to work. It's like if your computer is powered off, it doesn't mean there's actually no power in it. Like, there's still going to be uh, micro instances of power no, scattered throughout the thing. No, but if my His fucking servos, power supply shuts down, it yeah, doesn't work anymore. That's the main power supply to the servo muscles. I'm still saying he's allowed to have, like, a couple of minor things so that he doesn't immediately choke to death. Uh, yeah, okay, I open because, my filters and I ask, uh, brothers... Do you think you can carry me? They look amongst themselves. Oh, actually, I do have an idea. Um, I want them to... T- oh. Well, it is actually end of session, Ollie. So it should wait for next week. I will finish off on letting you know that whilst you probably can have your brothers carry you out of here or otherwise escort you out, that's likely going to really diminish their chances of survival. It is. You'd be a lot lighter if you chopped off all your limbs. Just saying. No, needs must. I suppose your power <laughs> generator is <laughs> gone. <laughs> Get so. quick! Start carving me up like a like a Christmas turkey. <laughs> yeah, chain fists are not subtle things. That that would just kill you from the damage, probably. Um, We'd let him roll toughness, but it wouldn't be an easy toughness. <laughs> it's roll it's toughness like, to resist getting your limbs sliced off by chain fist. One, people, people have lost their limbs, limbs many times in this game previously. Yeah, and two, people have lost I would their limbs. Usually... They haven't had them ripped off by chain fist, which are I used for tearing usually, bunkers open. Usually not allow it. He is a Space Marine Captain player character in a Space Marine-centric Great Crusade era campaign. Yeah, and there's the all-purpose fallback of Marnius Calgar. Um, so we'll leave, it, we'll leave it there. Oh, oh Lord. I'm so, so sorry, sorry, Ollie. I blame your Nicholas. I blame all of it on your Nicholas. No, you know what? I love it. There's a sort of poetic beautifulness to it that I roll so incredibly well throughout the entire session. I have to I have to say the sentence is about time and I get a hundred that I can't re roll as the last roll of the session. You got so far without fate as well. <laughs> you so well. I'm sorry. Um, so reminders for next session. Does anyone have anything they want noted down? Let's, Let's open up with Ollie's just so we don't forget it. Uh, Nick has killed me just slightly less, um, slightly more steps between the actions he did and, and me dying now, but he's still the number one root cause of my death, I think. No, I didn't mean to. I, I like that to be phrased in there. Somehow. You didn't mean to, because mean. Mean you did. <laughs> Oh, and of course, it was an accident. I didn't remind you. Exactly. Ollie it's manslaughter. Sorry? We have the Ollie sent out the evac order. Yes. Fair, fair. I was so worried that you were never going to come us and we were just going to show up to the fucking bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I think there would definitely be something poetic about young Nicholas killing two named characters by accident, one of which is yeah. named for him. <laughs> Uh, um, any other uh, any other highlights? Sorry, any other reminders? Uh, requisition the Astro Path from uh, Gazva. Fucking oh, damn, damn it, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, I know it's oh. tragic that Ollie's about to die and all, but have you ever thought about requisitioning the Astro Path from Gazva? <laughs> um, could you I put will it detonate the ship's fucking plasma drives and kill everyone if you can. <laughs> Sorry, Ollie. Oh. Could you put it so that uh, a minor that's minus 40 for me to move in this suit? Yeah, unless we find like information saying that it should be greater or lesser, so I'm willing to be yeah. overruled by the rulebook if you can find a uh, thing. I'll have a look. And that's to uh, strength tests, generally, and like movement-based things. Uh, yeah. I suppose strength or agility, I guess it would be. Uh, yeah, Nicholas, sorry? My mind map's gone. I'm just I'm showing that that's kind of obvious, though, so might not need to remind her for it. 
you know, I mean, I think it's always worth putting the reminders down, right? Like, even with obvious stuff, because it's obvious now, but say we have, like, a delay of a week, and then two weeks from now, who the fuck remembers what we did tonight? Like, half the time people are drunk in these sessions anyway, so... You know, half the time you're drunk. Ah, that's very true. Um, that's why it's useful to have the recording, so I can... I personally think some of my best sessions at GM when I'm drunk. I'm much worse as a sober GM. Sorry, I always get flashbacks to the young Nicholas dropkick moment when I say that and then realize all of my words are lies. Uh, any other reminders for next session? Our ship is pretty much fucked. <laughs> Wait, wasn't it just the auxiliary plasma supply you dumped? No, in? no, they managed to somehow get in the munitions hold oh. and yeah, detonate it. So we've got a massive vent hole in the ship venting, well, not venting, letting in all of the poisonous gas that's going to kill everyone because it's a gas giant. My I shut shit. the windows. Yeah, <laughs> you did, but... <sighs> Not a good day to live on a ship right now, for anyone. It takes a lot to put down a ship, to be fair. like Yeah, but not everyone inside it when they choke to death on poison. I mean, even then, even with the like colossal holes in your superstructure, it would take you quite a while. And your life sustainers are damaged but not destroyed. Um, so you're not in good shape, but you're not entirely fucked. Regardless, I have no edit down. Uh, any other reminders? I don't think of anything. Fair, fair. Uh, find the night households who, uh, betrayed us, and first skin them, then make them into servitors whilst they're still alive and skinless. <laughs> You can just skin the servitors. All right, no, I no, got, no. I just want them to know. I, I got the gist of that one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. There's Koya's skin lust. It's not absent, merely well directed. <laughs> skin. That's probably a good one, actually. Knight is loose on the obsidian hearth. I just put the ship then. I wonder if I could have him boiled in his own night suit. Potentially. Killing As in meats. melt the night suit down and boil him in it. You know what? If we chop my limbs off, I'm going to shotgun one of their night suits. Or a they would mind control you. We're not putting you in yeah. a night suit. Was it the Tannis, Tannis House ones that I can use? Piranis. Uh, no, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, but those are only on Mars and they're not likely to let them have any. Yeah. Not a good boy. I'll, I'll get one. They like it. But... Well, you would be a good boy if you had a night suit, Ollie. The issue is just like every now and then when you tried not to be a good boy, I'd be able to take over your character and go, mind imprinting, you have to act this way. <laughs> oh, no. And then if we get you and who's also drunk, literally drunk on power, that's just yep. literally and figuratively drunk on my night power, that's just not going to end well for anyone. Yeah. I don't want to see how that would play out though, badly. You know like how when you're like on top of a you know, a very tall thing, you want to jump off it a little bit, and that's large part of mine, and goes, no, don't do that. I'm getting that same feeling with night suits and your drunk GMing. The lure of the void. Mm-hmm. Any other reminders? I don't think so. I'm going to note down that Cusco sort of gone into decision paralysis on the bridge, because that was kind of interesting and fun. Um, I personally was like uh, more towards mental breakdown. Yeah, I left him in charge to shoot things, and he immediately had to make decisions. Yeah, and it's kind of just like flashbacks to the last time I had to do this, and half a city got flayed. I was pretty sure he wasn't going to have to make any difficult decisions. That's why I left him up there with the instructions of, just shoot some stuff. You're good at shooting at stuff. Immediate life or death decisions have to be p placed upon him. Look, it's not fair that all of the life or death decisions have to be made by Ollie, <laughs> and weirdly Creed, but he didn't fail a single roll this time. He failed one roll. I suppose technically Ollie also only failed one roll. <laughs> no, he failed two. Uh, so long as it's an important roll, all it takes is one. It's true. I failed one, and the fucking munitions base blew up. Uh, I'd just like to say say I'm very thankful that I could just uh, blow up bits of the ship. Oh yeah, we've uh, not even caught up to that bit yet. Ollie's still, in fact, everyone is still <laughs> operating on like a 20 minute lag behind <laughs> you. <sighs> Which means I guess you've also gotten the order to retreat at this point, to be fair. But you yeah, pressing on with your plan, as is, assuming you're okay with that. Um, but hey, it'll it'll be fine. 
yes, cat, it is a tragic situation. Um, feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time? Um, it's I'll a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, I both liked and didn't like the whole situation I was in. Like, you know, knuckle crack, lean back, like, oh, is this going to be a good one? <laughs> oh, fuck! What's happening? This is all burning down. It, it was a nice subversion of expectations, but at the same time, um, fuck. I'm I'm glad to hear that. That that sounds like it kind of hit the hit the sweet spot without going over. So we'll see if we can't uh, either keep it there or dial it back a bit. Thank you. Any other feedback? Uh, I like. kind of didn't like is about how shit it went on our ship when we didn't really fail any rolls. It just went to complete shit. Well, really, in, really quickly. Yeah, we were in a pretty desperate situation. We we, we kind of weren't. There were seven night suits loose in some storage bays, and Manabi Virith decides, let's vent the fucking plasma drives inside the ship. Like, I'm not saying it didn't work. There were about 15 other solutions. All right, fair. Why didn't you go with any of those rather than going straight I, to the... I mechanical. asked him to handle it! I didn't expect him to immediately jump to let's fucking detonate, let's fucking vent the plasma! You did also catch that that was what he was going to do and just let him go on with it, is the thing. Because there was other and, stuff for me to be doing! Yeah, I mean, At that point it was too late! No, I can go can running off advance. to stop him venting the plasma, letting the Akareth take over the fucking macro cannons and the goddamn... <laughs> um munitions bays, which blew up anyway. Yeah, it's it's a case of... Or I of, can just let him do it and hope he doesn't do too much damage. Yeah, it's it's a case of prioritising what you want Prioritising that well. my Admech Forge Shrine Master isn't so insane as to vent his plasma drives inside the ship to take out seven enemies who could be taken down with weapons that he has access to. What weapons do you expect him to have access to on his little forge, in his little forge shrine that can take down seven nights? cannons! Haywires! He's got graviton guns! Those have haywire effect! I mean, I suppose sufficient numbers, maybe, but... Yes, I mean, he has them! Like You go to the Mechanicum, you're going to get a Mechanicum solution. Of what? Destroy and damage the precious technology? Yeah, they tend to be weird with that. They flip flop pretty heavily between no, you must not do it, and I can do it because I am qualified and I make the decision. Right. So basically, yeah, that reasoning don't up trust oh. any NPCs because they will fuck you. Depends on the NPC, but also, like, you've known Mar- Manabi for multiple campaigns at this point, and has he ever struck you as either reliable or particularly well adjusted? No, but you know what he has struck me as, as you keep pointing out to me? Orthodox. And you know what the Orthodox tend not to do? Damage holy technology with risky stuff when there's other options available. Really depends on the Orthodox. The fucking Dark Mechanicum is Orthodox. And look how that goes. Or they start out as Orthodox. This just proves that being Orthodox is never the right way to do things. Always be unorthodox. Yeah, there, there wasn't intended to be a, like, there's one right way to solve everything on the Obsidian Heart. It was more like, you're in a clusterfucky situation, and you're going to get a bit of clusterfuck blowback. Um, bits of your ship are going to blow up. Yeah, it's just, it blew up to kill seven enemies that didn't need it to d- be killed by well, it. seven like, knights, to be fair. Yeah. yeah but they're, remember, they're jetpack knights, which you and I think forgot about, given that they were jetpack knights, then inside of a ship. So A, are not very good at walking, and B, would be heavily crippled by having to operate in a ship in an extremely confined environment, where yeah. they wouldn't really be able to dodge very well, and you could just overwhelm their ion shields with concentrated fire. I mean, could. You didn't. Like, that. No, because Manabi Virith vented a shitload of plasma on them! I mean, he went with the solution that he thought was most sensible, man. <sighs> I think if it had been a surprise one, I probably would see your point I think I'm just slightly salty more. about the fact that me and Carl failed one roll, and the munitions dump blew up, half of our ship has been. Half a- of the bottom a- side of our ship has been guarded with plasma. A and that one roll blew up. 
And yeah, you put doing... a massive hole in the bottom of the ship. Yeah. You're doing uh, crisis management stuff. Like, you're, you're going to take some pretty severe casualties. Yeah, I, I get that we're going to take severe casualties. Can it be from stuff that A, makes sense, and B, we have input on? Like, I mean, honestly, you should be taking more casualties from stuff you don't have input on. Like, at, at this range, you should be getting fucked up by enemy, uh, like, enemy fire significantly more. There's no way Yeah, to which is why I left Carl in charge on the bridge, thinking, well, he can shoot straight. He's going to have to do a bunch of rolls about moving and piloting the ship around with commanding and firing back with, you know, his weaponry and concentrating his fire. And Nope, just There's deal with the shit inside the ship. Not really any piloting roles to be made here. It's it's more... Uh, there's uh, Maybe I should have given you more ship firing roles, I guess. But That's what I thought he was going to end up doing, because that's why I figured he'd be okay left in charge, because, well, he's good. he's a good shot, and he can... He's got the skills to do it, and it wouldn't require too many bits of the being in command he doesn't like. I I do also wonder if you're getting a, a bit head up over the ship taking damage. Like, obviously it's not good, but it's also just a part of the narrative. No, oh, I, I do get that, but it is heavy damage that didn't need, like, the munitions dump blowing up because some Akareth got in when I diverted a shitload of Groups there to stop <coughs> that happening, and then Manabi Vera just deciding, fuck this part of my ship. A munition dump blowing up, not the. And you knew that that was what Manabi was doing anyway for quite a ways in advance. And unless I went down there to stop him myself, how exactly was he? You going to could have him? gone down there to stop him himself, uh, stop him yourself, or like I mean, you prompted that situation to begin oh, with. You could also then I'll just let the Akareth roam free on the ship and blow up more stuff. All right, I think we're getting a little bit salty here, so I'm going to call I'm going to call time on this, but yeah, crisis management going to crisis manage, I guess is the thing. Um I'll I'll give this feedback like a re-listen to on the on the uh, what's it called? Uh recording pass um and see if I can come up with some like better action points for you. I'm afraid I don't have anything super constructive at the moment. Questions. Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Everyone clear on the time distortion we've got, which is mm -hmm. everyone on current time other than young Nicholas, who's like 20 minutes in the future at the moment. Oh, uh, at what point did the night start being openly hostile to us? Uh, quite a while ago. You've been friendly firing them for some time, um, but it wasn't all of the nights. It's a fairly disunited set of households. Uh, disunited? I'll fucking oh. murder you, Ollie. Quick, quick, quick. Do it more on it. Um, initially, I thought we'd like sort of satiate them and we stopped firing on them and charged into glorious close range ship combat. Uh, I mean, satiated some, but plenty of people who were like, well, you've just blown up. In many instances, people they were related to or like were sworn to. Um, it would be the equivalent of if someone like friendly fired your Legion Master but then charged into melee combat with you afterwards. Some of you would go, well, you know, it was an accident. Some of you would go, I cannot live by this abomination. Shank the traitor. <laughs> no, I suspect the latter is probably in a pretty heavy minority at this point. Cool. Let's spin on then to XP. XP! Plot progression. Does anyone feel like any significant plot progression this session? We destroyed the bridge, which is something we had set out to do. Well, I destroyed the bridge, which is something I set out to do. Nick didn't help destroy the bridge. In fact, he made the task infinitely more difficult. I just want to. I severed the big gun, which is my task. No, it wasn't. At no point was it your task. My personal task, which has <laughs> developed the plot. <laughs> I mean, severing the big gun from the enemy mothership is a big thing. Okay, anything else? Fair, fair. Character development. Does anyone feel like there's any way you develop your characters this session? And if so, how? I feel uh, I developed a, an emotional ricochet of accepting my death, then not accepting it, then once again accepting it. Do you know what it's like to have death 
thrust upon your face, then snatched away, and then really it was just hiding around the corner, waiting to trip you over and kick you in the nuts. Because I know that feeling now. It's not pleasant. <laughs> yeah, it just made me have to look up how the fuck you spell ricochet. <laughs> There's lots of C's and H's in it, and the odd T, I believe. Fair, fair. Uh, anything else? Uh, Cusco has found out that maybe the effects of his commanding experience prior has uh, actually resulted in some minor PTSD, which is now coming to the fore. Well, we have a psychiatrist. <laughs> yes. No way in hell am I going to the psychiatrist on this trip. <laughs> now, tell me how that makes you feel. Well, like, I'm not going to let you eat my brain to find out. Yeah, that's that's like, you know, it would really help if I could. Uh, be more like, now, let me tell you how you feel. You literally, it just needs to be a little bit. Just, literally, just a little bit. literally, literally have a psychic power called reading that allows you to read emotions. <laughs> Why doesn't know that people's brains? <laughs> and it's like, doesn't know that. He does. You're literally, He's you're the literally. only other person who does. You're, you're literally the worst type of therapist because you're the person who says, I'm going to eat your feelings. No, eat your feelings. I'm going to eat... You just get all locked up in there. What some people do, are you some talking people, about? <laughs> some people eat their feelings and Nick is big up on, you know, offering that advice out. All right, let's exactly. just eat move away from Ollie's traumatic cannibalist therapy experiences. Any other character development? Uh, Mox off in the distance, uh, learnt some valuable lesson about uh, friendship. I- don't. <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> ah, yes. Coatl Mox sipping tea atop his bridge. Um, young, I don't know, is it, um, fucking, oh. You don't get XP for NPCs. Now, come Thinking on. Of middling Nick. Middling Nick and his sudden appreciation for, hold on, we've been relieved by what? Wow. <laughs> Like uh-huh. that sudden realization, like that's character development for him, and he's a persistent character. Middling uh, Nicholas, based on a real person. Middling Nicholas wasn't even supposed to be in the attack force. He was supposed to be back. And on yet the ship. he is. It just shows how much he's progressed as a character. It's, it's just like the second Creed relieved the Space Marine force. So they're going, well, I can't just give him any old guy. I don't want to make a new guy. So I guess he gets the only other named Havoc Squad company member we have. And hence oh, progressed its character. God damn it, that's not... No. <laughs> Fair. Excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well this session? Yes. I will murder you, young Nicholas. <laughs> I will feed you to the consequences of your own deeds the same way you fed Ollie to them. <laughs> I would like it noted that I have a huge shit-eating grin right now. Yes. Um, as I have a huge shit right now. I didn't thought you were going to leave it there. I've actually been holding one for a little while now, so... Uh, any other excellence of roleplay? I think... Yes. Uh, I think... Um, oh, sorry. I do think, you know, for all his faults, uh, young Nicholas did seem to roleplay that. Actually, I think uh, the bridge crew roleplayed really well. Everyone roleplayed really well. Nick did well with his... Um, with just being, you know, him, for lack of a better term, it was uh, the point where he was going to put the sword through the chain link and the last link, and he was like, no, I'm doing my own thing now. Um, I like the bridge crew, crew shenanigans and the blind terror of being a human surrounded by, uh, that Creed did, of being a human surrounded by space marines. Some of them dead, some of them alive, and trying to make his way to a bridge. Fair, fair. That was actually a really I good summary, I think. Oh, I appreciated Ollie's uh, role play on the bridge of the. Hold on, what the fuck's going on? Oh god, oh god, oh no, oh no, where's the emergency uh, <laughs> bulkheads? Let's just find this shit and leave. <laughs> yeah, I, I've really fucking enjoyed having the, like. Uh, semi comms blackout, just not being able to contact each other instantaneously over the Vox, but still sometimes being able to make it through. Seems like it's forced some really interesting decisions. Uh, any other essence of roleplay? Um, for fear of 
picking up potential scabs and uh, like regardless of the results uh, I feel that Benji's role play of convincing uh, Manabi Virith to take action in like so far as making him think it was his own idea um, was quite well done yeah all consequences aside that was uh, masterfully executed don't worry Benji when Koatlmox hears he's got leverage against him he will surely be usurped <laughs> he won't be usurped I'm going to kill him myself <laughs> If he isn't already well, that dead. works. I mean, that is a valid. Try and put Jeb in I'm just going to. No, I'm just going to walk up to him and <laughs> shoot him in the face. To say that one of the uh, Akareth got a uh, friggin' oh wait, no, you don't. I'm going to straight gun. up do it. I'm just going to straight up do it myself. It's like, but why did you kill this ranking member of the Mechanicum? Because he vented fucking plasma on my goddamn ship. I mean, <laughs> when he didn't fucking need to. I'm I'm just gonna put it out there as a little a little bit of a peace offering. But if there's ever a time to murder a ranking member of the Mechanicum and get away with it, it's whilst he's officially technically still MIA. So you have a, a window of time in which you can probably kill him without anyone even really batting much of an eye, let alone investigating. Just push him into the plasma stream that's currently cascading throughout the ship. No, I want him to suffer. Why do you want him skin to the bastard? Didn't he so, kind of save the ship? No! God. Easy, Ollie, easy. <laughs> yeah, we need to get through this so I can go take shit. <laughs> now, you could skin him so long as it's like the top layer of flesh. We've gone over this. He hasn't got much flesh left. That's the problem. Yes, he still has flesh, therefore you can still skin him. So I make, like that out to be, like feathers. I make that out to be 170 experience points for session number 23. That's 20 points of plot progression, destroying the Mothership Bridge, plus your Nicholas severing the big gun, whether or not it was his... Uh, like intended mission, it's definitely Ooh, been his. We get that one bonus goal. for uh, Ollie's joke. Oh, yep, that is also very true. I forget what it was, but it that uh, did happen. So sorry, 171 XP, um, 20 points character development. That's Ollie emotionally ricocheting around accepting his death. Cusco realizing that he's got PTSD, uh, and Cusco realizing that he's got PTSD over his prior commands. Uh, 30 points excellence of roleplay that's Ian Nicholas term explaining basic fighting to another Terminator the bridge crew shenanigans all round the blind terror of that one human NPC surrounded by dying space marines uh, Mackie's rapid decision making slash terror and Benji's tricking of Manabi Virith Manabi's lasted a lot longer than I was expecting him to um, plus 100 standard plus the single point from Ollie's funny joke. It was a good one. Was something like uh, no, the Osar, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the flick. We'll get it on the recording. Which brings us on to everyone's favorite part of the session. It's the highlights, so that he can go take a big shit. Carl, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, thank you, and. Um... Ah, uh, got no real way of expl- uh, say terming it pretty well, but um, grenade box guy's uh, folly. <laughs> what being yeah, the guy? He was still alive. <laughs> no, he's still going. Yeah, I just had Biggins as a champ. On my <laughs> okay, Biggins as a champ works pretty well. His name then. is Miggins. <laughs> oh, Miggins. <laughs> Miggins should be Biggins now, right? Apparently, <laughs> Miggin- Miggins lifts. Apparently, right. he's been oh, Miggins left fucking... so much, he's become Biggins. Yeah. Miggins evolved. Miggins became Biggins. <laughs> uh, any other War, highlights? Come on. Biggins, the scaredest man. Um, when in doubt, cut through the floor. Oh, sorry, I'm just. I'm, in my head, his rank is Corporal, and I don't know why. Corporal Miggins is such a funny name to me, but it is. Uh, when in doubt, cut through the floor. Anything else? Uh, that's it for me, thanks. Fair, fair. Cree, do you have any highlights for that session? Right, I'm outies. Fair, fair. So you Hi, Carl. Uh, it's all about the chain reaction. <laughs> I don't really get that one, but okay. I, I thought he was referencing the song. Nick was saying that a lot, wasn't he, when they were cutting yeah, the long thread? Yeah, he fits. was, but I, I never got why he was saying it. There was no I chain thought it was that going. weird song about chain reactions. I, I thought it was yeah. just chain fists. I remember that from Silence. Causing a reaction. 
Oh, oh is yeah, that what it, 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 but it, was, it was the reaction. It was chain fist, and also it was. I'm assuming once we cut the last thing on this big gun, lots of things are going to happen, and lots of people are going to die. Well, we'll see. Oh, lots of people are going to die. Don't don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other highlights, Creed? Uh, Space Marine go cut. Uh, I did see the image you linked in Discord. I think that's that's kind of fair. I almost imagine the more like sort of the Jurassic Park cars, like a cross between those and go karts. Oh yeah, I just Google image search space marine go karts. No, that's fair. <laughs> I suppose if anything, it would make sense to have like some kind of public service tram that goes along the conveyor way from one side of the ship to the other. Uh, any other highlights? Uh, Mackie pushes objective at any cost. Yeah, I like. I didn't prompt Ollie to flee because I kept expecting him to do it of his own accord. And like at every turn, rather than pull back after he'd started pushing, it was well, just keep pushing, folks. We'll fail a roll when we fail a roll. Proceeds to not well, fail any rolls it's, until I, that, that's good role playing though, because Ollie is essentially role playing an Iron Warrior. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, or even, it's not that different from a lot of the members of your company. You do tend to, like, keep pushing ahead. You know, Cree didn't let multiple limb loss stop him from pushing on the capital with, like, five guys on Galifaz. Oh, the, no, murders, just... the murder's always charging ahead into, like, anything they can get their hands on and skin. Um, I mean, even fucking you belly flopping your uh, flotilla into the middle of the advancing uh, enemy army. Second Legion doesn't really shy from combat. We, we do consistently push ourselves into the uh, to being the first. We did in the first campaign as well. It's also true. Does this mean that does the f- um, so we're the second? What was it? We're the second. Second Legion. Second Legion. Um, sorry, second Legion. But what chapter number are we in our I, Legion? I think you're either the third or second Great Company. I forget. Okay. Do the fur, do the other great companies have murder and and havoc, or are they still doing their own things and they're not unified with us yet? Um, there's a few different sort of, I guess, minor formations other than yours, but yeah, they would have their own murder, havoc, and tactical companies as well. We made it popular. We were the cool kids. We did it first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yes, actually, you by and large, I think the murder, especially. Yeah, all of them, Murder, Tactical, and Havoc, all started forming mostly after your uh, actions on Galifas. Was when the, after that they started becoming more popular in the other um, grand companies. Uh, and the Apothecary situation caught on after Halakarn, so that's also spread out now. Um, so the only thing that's really not caught on yet is the ship psychiatrist situation. But it ten thousand years. I'm going to throw a rebranding. I'm going to change it to. Librarian. Because psychiatrists read a lot of books. I get it. Smart. Any other highlights, Creed? That was it for me. Fair, fair. Uh, Benji, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, it's okay. Never think out of words. I can never think. No, I can never think out of words that I want to talk about. Fair. Uh, which is Creed, fi- Creed finally role plays a Praetorian. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Six bayonets, lads. <laughs> he never even got to do his bayonet charge. No, he didn't. Next time. Old boss. Solid salutators have seen some shit. There won't be any left to see any more shit eventually. The real question with the Solian salutators is, is it the same 2% that survives every time? Presumably. <laughs> That's why we say there will be only one eventually. One all powerful Solian Salutier. <laughs> Unkillable, but never wins anything either, and at what cost? Uh, <laughs> delayed <laughs> boom. Any other highlights? Grand Apothecarium has a mental breakdown. <laughs> Bastard. Yeah, that uh, that was delightfully ironic. Uh, any other highlights? Uh, I think that's everything. That's fair. Uh, cool. Who haven't we done? Ollie, do you have any highlights for that session? I do. Um, 
So I'm trying to think what's actually already been mentioned so far. Um, storming the bridge. Yeah, that was that was a sequence. I was expecting most of your squad to die. If I'm honest, uh, and, like I was f- fully prepared to cut down everyone. You should have lost more than two Terminators. That was... Oh, my God. Uh, scooby doing our way through the floor. <laughs> the Terminators scooby doing their way through the floor. <laughs> Terminators. Uh, where where have the bulkheads gone? No, uh, no, I can think of something better than that, actually. No, no it's gone. Something, something bulkheads. Something, the something. Bulkhead either. button by... <laughs> I can't think of another B. And um, to have hope so close and ripped from my arms. <laughs> oh, just... I can't walk anymore. By the cruel arms of fate's hundo. I can no longer escape the exploding shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For the record, I think Benji's probably right on all of the usability, especially for Cataphracti stuff. Uh, we're bending it a little bit for player playability. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. That, once that once that shit gets damaged, it's like you ain't moving it. Yeah. Funnily enough, Raw in Death Watch, you can totally move it, but Raw also Raw also allows for Doogie McIsaac to exist. And oh, I thought yeah. you said you would take the Raw rules if you found something better. Yeah. The Death Watch raw rules are infamously a bit silly. Yeah, well, I mean, as with all like all of the Dark Heresy lines, once you start to look into the physics of it, they get real weird real quick. Mm. Um, yeah, no, so it's essentially, if there are good rules for like how Terminator armor works without power, then we'll take those. If the rules say, oh, it's a minus five to everything, but you're otherwise fine, we'll probably not take those. Uh, but if it, if it's already like a static, oh, it should only be a minus thirty, not a minus forty. I would take that. Arguably, you know, cataphracte armor, so it's heavier, so it probably should be a harsher one. But uh, the point is, I'm I'm open to negotiations if you uh, yeah. if, if there's like a passage that already has something better thought out than my like, oh, minus forty seems appropriately harsh, but also kind of doable. Uh-huh. Like I say, um, Raw, Raw allows for Doogie McIsaac, the guy in scout armor who caber tosses a Terminator armored guy. Oh, like, I. Ew. I just remembered you, and I need uh, for a reminder uh, mm. to have someone try and make a stretcher for me out of the floor. Don't know how feasible it is, but I've noted it down. Thank you. Uh, I and in terms of other reminders, um, Hermes splaining's already been done. Uh, swish and flick. Wingardium blow blow ya shippa, I think it was, or something okay. along those lines. If only because I got what, a, a singular piece of XP, and I can't do anything. Fair, fair. Okay, young Nicholas, do you have any highlights for that session? You're shitting me. It's written in what? That's, that, that's from the the button, right? The button, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> like brother, Captain, what are you? You're shitting me. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was the quote. It was something along those lines. <laughs> it's like you're kidding me, you're shitting me. I can't believe it. Fair, fair. Anything else? Um, I think everything else has been taken. <laughs> yeah, I'm also pretty sure everything else has been that's taken. A, that's the one I've been clinging to for like the last fifteen minutes. It's like no one take this from me. It's fair. Okay, thank you all for a lovely session number twenty three. Uh, does anyone have any final words for the recording? Yes. Manabe Virith is going to die.